Welcome to Self Perfected. It doesn't go on. <laughs> hey, right. everybody. What's up? Hello. It's another week. That's right. That's right. Another it's week a- where we're not at war and we are totally at peace, as No Yoel Harari says. Or. How are you enjoying this period of peace? George Orwell says we were always at war with Eurasia. Or what's the other I'm one? I'm at war with Uranus. <laughs> Who did I see say, you need to pack up all your little friends and go back to Uranus? I don't know. Somebody said that recently. Go back to Eurasia Um, where you came from. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I just finished reading the first book of the Galactic Empire series, uh, The Stars Like Dust. It's a good one. You know what? I was actually concerned because I wasn't sure if it was good. I was like in the middle of the book and I was like, I don't, I don't think I like this one very much. Midway then, through, you're like, I'm not sure if I like this book. That's how I feel for a lot of books, actually. But it's not like, a very long book. No, <laughs> but halfway through, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. And then uh, like, then uh, right after that, it starts getting good. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting from the beginning. Like what is going on? Yeah. Really? In the very, very the, beginning. Yeah. You know, I, I, okay. So the last Asimov book that I had read was uh robots and empire and that one's just like boom 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 boom. it's like it's so exciting the whole way through and then um after that i had read renaissance man and then after that i had read uh flow my tears or maybe the other way around i don't remember but either way those are also pretty i didn't know you had only recently read that i thought you had read that a while back flow my tears no philip k dick for those who yeah. are tracking our book suggestions. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, right now, Christine's reading, um, she's read all those books. And right now she's reading, which one is it, Christine? Uh, oh, do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Yeah. Spoiler alert, they do. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just saw somebody- Did they totally in- bastardize the book in the movie? Uh, that's what I heard. That's like it should just I, be a, it should have been like a comedy, not a fucking dramatic, like, you know. I, I haven't read it. I haven't read it. But, oh, okay. but um, I did see a reference to that. Like somebody had made a Twitter comment that said, do Tesla, Tesla bots dream of electric cars, something like that. And I was like, no, I, I get it. That's cool. I guess <laughs> I could have done better. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I like the Galactic Empire because although at first I'm like, it just felt like such a shift and you're like, ah, oh, but all my, all my old characters that I love, you know, <laughs> but right, right, it's like right. all this new, randomly new things. Yeah. But it does, it's kind of like, um, I don't know. It's kind of like when you get a new album by an artist that you like, and you're like, it's different than the other one. And it's you're like, like, okay. Kind of like when uh, Kanye came out with that, like totally like religious album, the Jesus is King one. And you're like, oh, no. And you listen to it and you're like, oh, this shit kind of hits. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to church every day. Next thing you know, you're like, I had a friend actually who was like, I don't know why, but I'm listening to this shit. And I'm like, woo, I don't even go to church. <laughs> he's, he's like, I'm not even religious. But I, I was just like, oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> That's interesting, actually isn't it <laughs> yeah speaking of of uh great music i was just before the podcast i was watching um the new ice spice video i you're gonna have it for me i don't know oh, anything you gotta watch it later yeah it's just i like to keep my i like to keep my finger on the on the pulse of the youth you know mm, mm, okay. but no i happened to see like in my spotify for some reason that was you know how they promote shit in spotify yeah yeah I'm like yeah. It's so interesting. Spotify people like, act like, oh, this one. But it's like it. AI. It's just uh, it's just your friend and it just does everything you like. Like, no, it fucking doesn't. Because why does it keep recommending me LGBTQ pride playlists? Because it's your friend and it just likes it. And it's like, well, like. you talk about it a lot, but I don't listen to it. <laughs> when I like I listen to Yellow Magic Orchestra. I listen to Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa. <laughs> I listened to Kevin before. I listen to Dave Brubeck. 
Why, why does it keep recommending me LGBTQ stuff? Because you're a fag. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like trying to program me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty the, I think the AI has a quota. It's like, we need five more gay people today. Yeah. So it's like sitting there trying to recruit. But anyway, so, uh, but I was just looking at the, because, you know, I spice, got to keep up with that. And it's, but it is interesting because you see what people are interested in and what's being programmed and all of that. And it's this whole, it's this whole, I'm a baddie and I can get what I want. And like, I'm better than you. I'm better than everybody. And that's and how like, I feel. Th that's it though. You know what I mean? That's the whole point of it. Yeah. You know, who is listening to it? I wonder, is it women or is it men? Or do you think it's both? Uh, no, I'm sure it's women. I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's it's young women like like little teens who are just like in high school right now thinking i'm a baddie i'm bad i can get what i want i can get what i but want the song is called you think you're the shit yeah you're not even the fart oh that's the song title yes that's hilarious it is pretty funny i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go but you know how they come, she comes up with these like you know terms and stuff or like phrases or whatever so it's like that's the that's the hook of the song okay yeah okay all right i'm with it i'm i'm just gonna go listen to that as soon as i'm done with you're this gonna be podcast. like that other guy you were talking about like you listen to the song you're like man i'm not even a baddie but i'm over here like getting cash and like <laughs> you know like breaking people breaking hearts and stealing your man and it's just crazy <laughs> what's this happening hey mitch yeah. we were just <laughs> talking about the, the latest ice spice so you, you oh, listen to it, right <laughs> Which is not a drink at at Starbucks, though they should do a crossover promotion thing. Yo, that would, wow, that would, that would hit, right? That would really. I hit. do like Starbucks. Um, no, I don't know. You did like Ice Spice. I only knew about Ice Spice because uh, we had some Gen Zers at our Enter the One Percent first event, and I got all up to date on NBA yeah. Young Boy, Ice Spice, Furries. Bro, you know Sus, more than me. Sussy Baka. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what they say. Oh, yeah. It's you have to say like yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it's a Z. It's it's a that's a Z sound. Actually, it's a double S, but it sounds like a Z for all you guys who are following with phonics. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I, I started watching this video. Um, I don't know if I sent it to y'all or not, but I started watching this video talking about the dark truth about Gen Alpha or something, right? And oh, I, yeah, tell me about it. Well, I, I again, I just watched the beginning of it, but I can kind of see where it's going. I'll probably finish it later. But but it was that point of like, okay, you know, people like my generation or a little bit younger grew up on TV. Okay, and you think about the content of like cartoon shows and so forth, right? Um, which is, you know, some people would be like, it was so much better. You know, it was really better in my day or something. It's like, no, it wasn't fucking good it was just different right but the programming was more just it was for kids this was the point being made in the thing it was for kids right and there would be the the off you know like adult joke like in a spongebob square pants thing or something right sure but the point i think that he was making in the video or part of it anyways was just that it's not even that they're making content for kids now like what kids are watching is like they're making the the content for like an adult like it's very dark like there was this one thing they were showing it was uh it was like mickey mini mouse or yeah it was Minnie mouse and she got caught in an escalator and like blood was flowing everywhere and like little minnie and mickey her kids were like crying and stuff and it, it's like stuff like that and like and it had like millions of views within a day or something Jeez, you know and, and so the point was, was just in, like yeah this was on like youtube kids or something i think it was on youtube uh Probably not YouTube Kids. I can't remember if it was YouTube. on YouTube Kids, YouTube Kids, but uh, but there were some that were, if not that one, that were similar in nature. That were, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like, okay. uh, yeah. So, remember when I was telling you guys about like a uh, skibbity toilet? This is yeah, like this toilet with a head sticking out of the fucking toilet, <laughs> like that shit is it's so crazy because i know so many little kids who watch shit like that or like um there's another one that the kids love uh huggy wuggy i think is what it's called i don't know about any of these things man 
and I have and kids. It, <laughs> and it's not because they're not telling me about it. They're not on there watching that shit. Like, right. That would not right. be acceptable. But kids love to watch. And if you watch this as an adult, you're like, this is fucking creepy. Like, I wouldn't watch this shit. Like, this would scare the fuck out of me, you know? But Huggy, the kids I'm going to just look at it while you're talking. Yeah. Oh, it's like, shit. Yeah, right? Right? It's got, like, these sharp teeth and everything. Dude, like, I love how, how Google, the next question at Google is, is Huggy Wuggy appropriate for kids? Like, why the fuck are you asking? The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is, if you have to ask that, you're like, nah, that's not appropriate at all. At all. It's crazy, man. I mean, it's even like, this is interesting because I'm looking at uh, Huggy Wuggy on Google and mm-hmm. then it's showing these other characters that are like it. Like back in the day, Jack Skellington. I never even watched that. Remember that Nightmare Before Christmas thing? It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was yeah, like, was... it would be like on a Disney movie because I would watch Mighty Ducks D2 because that was like, that, my that was creepy too. That was creepy too. Well, yeah, Mighty that, Ducks that was, was, was creepy in its own way, but no, it was in the, in the, <laughs> no, we were talking about Nightmare Before Christmas. No, I know, I know. <laughs> on, on a, it was on the VHS. It was in the previews because you VHS say uh, fucking thing every time, and it would always show that one. I was like, "This is fucking weird." Yeah. But now yeah. this is like that to the extreme. Yeah. Huggy Wuggy. It, it's <laughs> it is that to the extreme. There's like jump scares and all that stuff. Like kids will play games on the computer and it'll like like try to scare you and like it's a it's a nightmare. Let, let me show you. Okay, make me let me co-host or whatever. Uh, uh, I thought I did already. There you go. I looked up Huggy Wuggy, okay, yeah. and then the shorts pops up, right? And so here's <laughs> here's what here's what I see. If your kids are watching, <laughs> yeah, no, don't let your kids watch. This is this yeah. is like the first recommended short, so it's Jeez. like playing on the Huggy Wuggy thing. Yeah. Can you hear what it? The heck, no, I can't hear it. But I don't need to. It's okay. Oh, I don't, no, I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> no, it's okay. I Watch it be um. Know. What's that band? Hunter Gex song. Okay. Right, here you go. Ready. <laughs> 100 yeah. gex crossover. Where are you? <laughs> oh, when you type in Huggy, well, at least when I typed it in, that's what you're going to see. That is, uh, that's, that's not, that's just like somebody taking the Huggy Wuggy thing and then exploiting that to get people to. So you start looking at how, oh man, how do I even explain it? It's like, this whole ecosystem people love that word it's like a whole ecosystem of like something occurs it gets popular and then everyone's like i gotta use that to make money for myself and i don't care what the i don't care what the consequences seem i'm not and so now like before it would just be disney that does that so they would hire they'd have all this money production staff all this stuff right but now anyone can do that also i mean think about it disney's the original of it as well right you know like like if if a whole bunch of parents were against it the liability would be on Disney. It'd be like, ah, okay, Disney, you you messed up sure. on this one, right? Or, or yeah, they'd have true. to take a hit financially, right? Sure. But yeah. with everyone else doing it, it's just like you have no fucking control, and they don't give a fuck if like <laughs> you're mad at them. Like, there's twenty thousand other people doing the same exact fucking thing, you know, and you're not going to stop them from doing. It. And do you know how many parents leave their kids to just watch YouTube on their own? Like, yeah. I, I was just talking with a parent yesterday who he was saying something along the lines of like he's asking this question and i i just sometimes i go into groups like i find parents who are asking questions and i'll like i'll answer their question but he was asking this question of like um how can i help my child he doesn't like to be bored and he will like literally throw a fit um if it's anything he doesn't even remotely want to do and um why didn't the guy read Bertrand Russell, man? <laughs> I know, right? And, and he's like, and um, at school, they tell me that, you know, they're having trouble. The teacher tells me she's having trouble, like, finding things that keep his interests. And I'm like, okay, first off, it sounds like your kid's, like, watching a lot of screens. So, I mean, like, do you have an iPad or, like, what, what what's the deal here? Because if I were you, I would cut that out. Whatever the screen time is, you got to cut that down like completely. And if you're watching a lot of screens, you know, you got to cut that down as well. And, uh, and his reply was like, yeah, he, uh, he has his own phone. He watches, he's five years old, has his own phone, watches YouTube. Um, so some of the things he watches on YouTube are like, he's learning how to draw. I don't want to take that away from him. Like, dude, what the fuck? Like you're, you're screwed. 
you're screwed. And he's like, yeah. And his uh, little two-year-old brother also watches um, like about an hour, I would say. You, of Huggy Wuggy. Of, <laughs> only of Huggy Wuggy something Wuggy educational. He, so far, <laughs> he only likes educational things. And I'm like, dude, if you think that giving your child a phone and letting him watch, you know, whatever he wants for one or two hours a day and – um and then also he watches another hour or two at school whatever the school is right every day I'm like dude i don't want to know what you think is you know educational for your two-year-old <laughs> you know like, like like obviously you are not in the know but this is the, the average person this is the average person that's out there right now they're like oh what's one or two hours a day you know, screens. That's that's nothing. That's nothing because people are. You know, I mean, if you go on your phone and you look at the screen time that you've already spent, you know, in a in a day on a, on a regular basis, I bet you, for the average person, it's more than twelve hours a day. I'm betting on screens. On, on screens, right? And of course, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's on there that's like, I don't know, maybe you're FaceTiming or something like that. But generally, the most time is being spent on social media, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. I was seeing something that was like, oh, it, it was basically like uh, how, you know, Facebook will basically show you things to try and get your attention. And and the algorithm is basically made like, if uh, I can get you to spend an hour being angry, that's better than getting you to spend 10 minutes being happy and even better than you sleeping. Right. Um, and, and so the idea is like with, you know, the social media, it's like their whole thing is don't give a fuck how it makes you feel or, or what thoughts are going through your mind. As long as you're on here for longer, because then I can advertise to you longer, obviously. Right. And, uh, and they were making this point of just like, if you look at the way the algorithms are, TikTok has completely, they figured out, okay, here's how we hack the human brain. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see people and like even old people will get on TikTok and they'll just start scrolling and scrolling and they can't stop. And then it's like, hey, do you, do you realize you're just like giving your brain to this thing? And like, it's, it's, watching you it sees what you spend the most time on and it gives you more shit like that and it knows but, how to but drink when i'm on my deathbed i want to have me my memories i need to have memories <laughs> i, I want to have memories of all the all i remember the, what do you huggy, what, what do you remember most gran what what did you what did you remember most i remember huggy wuggy and i spice <laughs> oh, no, oh nba times. young boy bring him back <laughs> beautiful times oh yes uh, uh hug, grandpa do you remember me who the fuck are you <laughs> who are you are you huggy wuggy are you here huggy wuggy to see me to hug me and eat me <laughs> is that funny though that's the same pattern it's like the same pattern people have by participating in like religion and heaven and like like um it's like they're giving their life force to this energy and it's like, that is the purpose of my life. But <laughs> they miss that it's the same fucking pattern. So whether it's TikTok and you're scrolling all day or you're participating in your thoughts about, uh, oh, I'm going to be a good person and somehow I'm going to like get to heaven and like, yeah, God's, you know, God's doing some battle on my behalf. It's like the same thing. Isn't that, of, that yeah. don't you, don't, isn't that kind of the same thing as believing that the world is a simulation? Well, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you don't think this is the real world. Like it's yeah, just like yeah. this temporary yeah. thing. So like it's literally, actually, it's, just it's people any, are the same as those. Uh, you know, it, it goes back to that Bernard quote. There's it, like the denial of what's here. You're either being here or you're not being here. Mm. It's just to be here is so much more. I'll use that in air quotes. It's so much more than the average Joe Schmo walking down the street. So you could be like, "Hey, are you here?" They'd be like, "Yeah, I'm here," but they're not here because their mind is so layered and layered and layered where they are actually living in a simulation, but that's the process. All right. We need to, I got a, I got a shirt. 
Where you uh, at to, in the process? To, to be here or not to be here. That is the process. Hey, hey. I like it. Okay. okay that was Add a good one. To the list. Add it to the list. That was a good one. Actually. Ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, while Mitch adds that to the list, I, I don't know if you caught what he said, but he said, you know, that layering of your mind, that is the simulation. You are living in a simulation, but not in the way that you think. Were you telling me? Were you? You and I were talking the other day, right? Yeah, we were talking, talking about, about the that. Philip K. Dick thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell that story. That was a funny story. Which story? <laughs> You're a comedian, right? Tell me a joke. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> Tell me, make me laugh right now. Make me laugh. Now, do you remember, remember that story about um, Philip K. Dick, like talking with that group of people? Oh, that's right. That's right. Because because uh, Amal had told me that. Uh, uh, yeah. he, he was uh, he was telling me that he was watching this um, speech that Philip K. Dick had given. <laughs> And uh, he was like, it's from the 70s or something. And Philip K. Dick is like in front of the crowd. And he's like, guys, we're in a simulation. And everyone's just like, the whole audience is just like looking around like, oh, what's he talking about? Like, what's what's wrong with him? Which is really funny considering like Philip K. Dick is kind of known for being like maybe potentially schizophrenic or like like completely <laughs> strung out. Like, <laughs> like they're like, there's something wrong with this guy. And yet he's got all these popular books. I think like 11 of his novels were made into uh, movies, right? Something like that. Um, a good number of them were made into movies. And uh, and yeah, anyway, but he's kind of known for like being crazy or whatever. And so it's funny because he's saying like, guys, we're, we're in a simulation. And everyone's just like, uh, what are you, what's, what's he talking about? And I was telling Cam about this and Cam was like, that would have been probably around the time when people, when that idea was just kind of taking root in a way, like when it became popularized. But then we were also talking about like, but also that's kind of been said from the beginning of philosophy, you know, like Plato saying, you know, Plato's allegory of the cave is basically like we're living in a simulation just with different words, different um, vocabulary. But also, I think the way Plato says it is a really good way to say it as well, because what he's suggesting is you're trying to understand. Well, actually, no, because he has like the shadows and all that stuff. But, but if you actually look at his philosophy, he believed that this world was the world of shadows. Yeah. So it didn't like, make sense. He, he believed that there was an ideal world outside. And like when you're doing philosophy and math or whatever, like you're, you're accessing that true world. You're so accessing the numbers. So I, I know, I know what you want to talk about Cam. I don't know if actually you wanted to talk about this, but I was telling Christine, like Cam's probably going to talk about this. <laughs> and it was to do with. Let's guess. Math. Let everyone guess. Throw in the uh, comments. What do you think Cameron wants to talk about? I already talked about ice spice. I don't know what you guys are. <laughs> okay drop a one if you think it's huggy wuggy drop a two if you think it's about artificial intelligence drop a three if there's a robot involved drop a four if it's involving animals drop a five if it's involving cutting down trees or making something out of cutting, yeah and then drop a six if it involves his kids being geniuses Drop a seven Eight. if it's a one-liner that Katie said that is still resonating with him. I did fix the plumbing in our well house. <laughs> oh, plot twist. None of them. <laughs> is that what you wanted to talk about? <laughs> Mitch, Mitch is just going to keep going with numbers until, <laughs> and also, until he got to okay. Did you all see what, last time you were here that big that big water tank I have out here? I don't know if you saw uh, it. I probably wouldn't even realize. Like it. Wh where all the it's gravel like a big is? cube. It's like no, it's like a big cube. Uh, it's like a plastic uh, cube, and it's like they they ship like oh, oh yeah, it's not, like the big yeah, white one. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I have that. I had a hose. So I had to get like an adapter for like the, you know, like the little, I don't know what you call it, like this thing that screws on that you can turn the water on and off, right? Spout or or like the flow, the spout thing, or whatever. The, it's a valve, I guess. But I had to get a, a, an adapter that reduces it down so that I could put like a like a normal hose. like three quarter inch yeah like hose spigot in there. Yeah, yeah. And then I had a hose that went to a float valve. So it's like this thing that goes on the side of one of those big fifty five gallon or fifty gallon like stock tanks. You know what I'm talking about? Those like plastic like 
it was like a big tub almost, right? Okay. And so it has this float valve. So you turn the water on and it stays on. But then when the water fills up, it pushes this little floating thing up and then seals like a, a rubber ring. So the water doesn't keep flowing in. So it's like the water is working against itself. So it shuts itself off. And okay. when the animals drink the water, that thing goes down and then it lets the water come out. Right. It's kind of similar to how a carburetor works with a float. It's just a float. Anyway, so. Uh, but then it froze Everybody here for like knows a, how a carburetor works. Exactly. It froze here for a week. And I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but because it was going to freeze, I unplugged everything you know, just to leave it. So it's not like freezing with water in it. And when I went to put the hose back in the other day, like the threading on the float valve housing where you put the hose into, it's all cracked and stuff. So like the hose wouldn't stay in. It would just like, it's like, imagine the threading is just all fucked, you know? So like it won't stay screwed in. Yeah. So, but those things are like 25, 30 bucks or whatever. Right. So when I was at tractor supply the other day, I was getting some animal food and I saw this other kind of float valve that's made of a more sturdy material and I was like, hmm, what if I just, but it had like an inch. It was like not three quarter inch. It was one inch. So like three quarter inch is what the hoses use, like your normal garden hose. So I was like one inch. And then I realized, oh, that's like standard, like PVC pipe for plumbing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what if I just made like a PVC pipe thing that would go from the water, that big water tank to that flow valve and just make it like kind of a permanent thing that I can screw and unscrew or if it breaks, I could just replace part of the pipe or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty much an engineering genius. Genius, uh, Elon Musk, if you need any tips on the rockets or robots or anything, you just, you know where to find me. So. <laughs> on the plumbing for the rockets or robots. <laughs> if, you need, if, if you have any PVC needs with uh, Optimus. Um, yeah, if, if the uh, Optimus needs to take a shit, uh, <laughs> this yeah. is your guy. He, he can, uh, you know... <laughs> I was going to say wire that up, but I guess with Dude, and like, wired okay. Up. So in the well house, I, I, I'm not sure exactly why, but like the, one of the pipes busted and it wasn't because there was water in it when it froze because I, I bled all the lines. And I thought it was because maybe I let, I, when I turned it back on, like I didn't open up one of the valves, but that's not the case because the other day I noticed one of the lines is running is because I had had it left open. I didn't realize. So I had to go turn it off. So that really wasn't it. I'm not sure why it but broke, but anyways, I had replaced these maybe like last year, the mm -hmm. lines in the well house. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I had ever done something like that with like plumbing stuff. So it probably took me like three hours to do all that, you know, of yeah. like kind of like trying to figure it out and understand it and everything. And this time, like I just went to the Trico place, got the plumbing, got, got all the parts I needed. And then I was on the phone with you guys, like on that meeting doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. I mean, it didn't take that long. It took less than an hour nice you know so it's pretty cool and then it's still holding up so that was kind of cool so now I'm, I'm like learning how to do that kind of stuff you know and then yeah. you start getting ideas you know like i saw a toilet when i was at lowe's and i was like dude i could literally just put a head in it and then you got <laughs> that skibbity toilet right <laughs> i was like i could literally just put one out in the barn and like run like water i mean you'd have to like have somewhere where it goes and everything but i started thinking like things start to become possible yeah that you wouldn't have thought possible before like yeah, yeah, i was yeah. talking to somebody I think Katie was on the phone with like her mother or somebody and they were just like catching up or whatever. And she was talking about, we thought there was like a leak somewhere out here. Or I think there is actually a leak, like in the water line coming to the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was a whole process isolating that. And she was like, Oh, you should just call a plumber. And I'm like, why? Bitch. You know, like, like, well, but it's just like, you're going to spend more than necessary to have someone else do it when it could be done yourself. I mean, I'm not saying you can never do something like that, but when back when I had just lived in the city and never knew any of this kind of stuff, that would have been my immediate thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. there, there are limits where I know like, okay, this is a case where I do need to have a professional person do something versus no, I can actually do that. Cause yeah. in the past, when I've had a certain issue, I call somebody over and I watch them do it. And I'm like, I literally could have done that in the time it took for this person to get here, schedule it, do all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like I could have just done it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, and it's, I like doing stuff like that now before I wouldn't have wanted to do it. So it's kind of fun. It's interesting because like stuff like that, Im imagine if everybody knew how to do that stuff. Like, okay, okay. Here's perfect case and point. Imagine if everyone in all the third world countries knew how to do stuff like that. 
Imagine they all knew how to make, create click funnels. <laughs> We'd be fucked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, I'd be clicking on funnels for Nigerian princes all day. <laughs> what if everybody in the world knew how to be a motivational speaker? Oh man, man, have you seen that African? Can you imagine? Like, he does. Who the they talk to? Speaking? The the one that that is like. Um, what if everybody like, was a sales trainer? Uh, <laughs> the eagle when he sees the storm. He flies high. When the people see the storm, they get scared. <laughs> Have you seen that no, one? No, I don't think so. He does these like motivational quotes. Actually, I think he... I have seen that guy. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Who is this? Is this someone on YouTube? Yeah, he's on YouTube. And he's oh. like, he's like, um, you try to don't try to do what other people do. Everybody has their own. He tells this Test whole elaborate story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of reminds me of, it's nothing to do with it, but you know, like how those guys, they sent Scott that, they made Scott that video for his birthday. With oh, those, yeah. like African dudes like dancing and saying happy birthday to Scott and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, you can literally rent Africans yeah. to like make a video. Like if I wanted to, I could make a make. I could go pay some Africans to like make a video that says Drake, "I love you, you sweet little boy," you know, and like you know what I mean. And like they would do it. Yeah, and I'd have a funny video. It's like that. Do you know how like how abusive that is? Yeah, it's just insane. It's so fucking crazy. Anyway, the point that I'm making though is if everyone... if they had equal money, they wouldn't be possible. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it, and if everyone there knew how to do the things be a motivational like speaker. <laughs> Do the things that are actually like relevant for your life. Thank you very much. <laughs> like if they all knew how to set up a Federal Reserve Bank. Oh, we'd be Federal Reserve <laughs> lending or whatever they call it. We'd be fucked. They would have no remorse. They'd have. They'd be so ruthless with it. They'd be like, guys, you know how long we've lived in poverty. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not actually what I thought you were going to talk about today. I wasn't. It? No, I don't know. You're the one who thinks you know what I want to talk about. So I know I know what you. It's know. actually you that know. I know what you want to talk about. I do, I do, and I'm going to take it back to the point where you said that Plato and all those guys thought of like when we were doing philosophy or math or whatever, we were accessing that ideal plane, that ideal universe, right, and. Uh, Within that, there's like Euclidean geometry, right? Which is basically like for everyone listening, don't, don't, don't get scared. It's just the geometry that you <laughs> go back to how you work. <laughs> go back to how you it's the geometry that you learn in school. It's the geometry that says that it's the geometry that you memorized and forgot in school. Exactly. Exactly. It's the geometry that says a perfect square has exactly the same exact sides that can exist in real life because you know Damn, if you Cameron, try to how measure... does that affect your plumbing abilities knowing that it's not going to be perfect <laughs> i can never make a perfect plum never never well don't you have plum trees it's plum stupid that's <laughs> what i think about geometry <laughs> i do have a plum tree actually yeah do I? See? so you can make a perfect plum it's a yeah what is that i'm trying to remember the name of it do you have black plums or red well, it doesn't produce fruit yet. Well, I'm trying to remember what kind of plum it is. Max, I see Max outside. He would know. I just can't remember. You should have got the black ones. They're the best. Yeah, those. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I like those the best. I don't think I do, actually. Oh, yeah. Those are the know. sweetest ones. What are you talking about? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, geometry what you know where i'm going with this no i don't yeah what how do you the thing that you please keep going jeez all right you're gonna make me swallow that all right anyway here's the point um in geometry you learn about perfect triangles and perfect squares and all these shapes that do not actually exist in 
nature and in real life. And this is supposed to be, or in math in general, this is supposed to be like the ideal plane where, you know, everything can be worked out mathematically, right? This is the reasoning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, good point. I was just yes. thinking like you're make, you're connecting the dots really well. Get yes. it? Connecting the dots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you guys ever want to play Connect for it. No, that's not it. My kids love that game where you draw the dots and then you try to like make the box. Yeah. yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I like yeah, playing yeah. that too. So anyway, um, the point is uh, that everyone likes to look at that. Philosophers, the, the smart people, you know, the quote unquote smart people of our society likes to look at that as like, yeah, that, that's like real thinking. That's like real, like that, that can't be um, disputed. Math can't be disputed because one plus one always equals two. And you know, th there's these hard rules in math. And do you want to take over, Kim? Well, I'm not sure where you're getting at yet. No, go ahead. No, but okay, but <laughs> I'm trying to see how you can paint the picture really effectively for everybody where it's like, um, we're so ingrained to think that logic and mathematics and science generally is sort of the end all be all of like knowing truth, knowing the truth about things. You know what I mean? And even to the point where you might go, well, duh, like what else are you supposed to use? You know? And even we talk about, see, now if you go back and you listen, there's very few times, unless I'm just speaking very loosely, there's very few times where I say logic um in the context of like when we're talking about destiny process etc there's very few times Actually, where i'm like or, or when i'm talking about making decisions it's like not of, just a lot of the times you'll say like logic like no they are using logic but it's just a logic for blah, right. blah, blah. like like in other words i'm, logic I'm, I'm rarely that. using purely logic to justify what i'm saying do you know what i mean because i'm always really specific about like your logic is based on your assumptions and religion is a logic and people don't really understand what those words mean. Like if you go back to it in the beginning was the word, but that was written in Greek, right? It says in the beginning was the word, but it actually said logos. So it's translated into the word word. So they meant a lot more than just words. They meant like order and so forth, right? There's a lot to it. So it's like an ordering of words. That's logic, right? It's like how they all relate to each other. And then there's based on how they relate to each other, there's rules, right? So like that, that's why people try to make arguments about like, well, the transgender thing is doesn't make logical sense, right? Um, and Cam's about to tell you it does. <laughs> See, here's how you say it. Well, but according to their logic, it does. According to their logic, they just don't have the same logic as you. Because you're like, well, um, there's there's only two genders. It's like, well, no, there's many genders. How can there be many genders? Like, because it's based on how you feel. Like, there can be many genres of literature, can't there be? Because you're making it up. So I can make a new genre of literature if I want to. You can't be there's only two genres. There's only two. I'm like, I mean, there's only two. There can be many, you know? And so, but it's a different, it's a different set of assumptions that you're dealing with. And you might think like, well, but math, I mean, the assumptions are, they're just self-evident, they're obvious, but they can't be proven. I mean, you guys took geometry, right? Or if you read Discworld, they call it geometry, J-O-M-M-E-T-R-Y. They love to, the guy, Terry Pratchett loves to do that where he'll take, he takes a word like that, but then he always spells it wrongly as if the person doesn't know how to spell it. So when they say it, it's spelled incorrectly. Yeah. But it's also like they don't really know what it is exactly. So it's kind of like the implication that they're saying it because it, um, like there's this one character who has dentures yeah. and they call them like dent chewers or something like that. Because like they don't understand what are you saying dent chewers? Like they, they don't understand what it is. Yeah. Or like insurance, they call it in sewer ants. Because like, this guy's talking about insurance, but they're like, what is this? But he's British, so probably they say it differently, you know? Like, yeah, what is yeah. this in sewer ants? You know, like, and they just refer to it as that, and it's always written that way. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, what was I talking about? Uh, logic, the limits of logic, logic. assumptions. 
Um, well, okay. The, for, for, any, some, for any okay. newbies here, just this is an important point, which I learned early on, is that logic and common sense are not necessarily the same thing. Like you can be logical and not have common sense with it, or you can have the starting point and the understanding of common sense, what's best for all. And from there you use logic. That would be the only valid form of logic, truly. Like logic produces a certain result based on your assumptions. It doesn't mean that it gives you always the truth about something. And I mean, uh, we can talk more about it, but I'm just kind of trying to give some basic points of, of all this because it really, it goes pretty deep if you think about it. Um, think about anybody who disagrees with the medical system or something, right? Imagine if something happened in the past few years, a big major event dealing with the medical system that made you question Ooh, things, right? You should give it a number, like event 201. Yeah, but there's a logic to all of that. The people who buy into it, there's a logic to it. And you can't, like if you ever talk to somebody who's been trained at medical school, like they're not gonna, depending if they're not willing to question all their assumptions, they'll just they'll just dismiss anything you, you would say. Right? Yeah, and there are people who've gone to medical school and they realize it's a, a set of tools, but they're not limited by it. You know what yeah. I mean? It'd be like if you were like, well, there's, there's, the med there's the Western medical world, which is correct. And then there's Eastern medicine, which is all just a bunch of hoo-ha, fantasy, woo-woo bullshit. And it's like, maybe there is validity to both in certain contexts and you can use both things and it's not like one is right one is wrong you know what i mean it's 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 a matter of you have certain tools and in certain contexts they can apply um so like for example i'm just trying to look at what's an example of this um but going back to the geometry thing right so geometry. i'm sure most people don't remember geometry right but you do remember some basic stuff okay when i took geometry and I went to a private school and they, I took honors geometry, right? And we, we like literally went through Euclid. I'm not saying we had Euclid was our textbook, but it was, we started with the first pot, the first axioms, postulates, and then started proving theorems. And we did that. We didn't just get it. It wasn't just like your normal math textbook where sure. it's like chapter one, you know, and then it, cause that was like the regulars class. They did it that way. So it was more like dumbed down in a way. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to like the pure, like, okay, here's the postulates, right? Postulate is something that you just say is true. Right. Um, like they have these things called points, right. And then two points form a line. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, uh, three points form a plane. Right. Um, and then you have, uh, you can have lines that are parallel or that intersect or that are perpendicular. You guys remember all this stuff, right? Yeah. And there's this one point where if you study geometry in school, they get to this one point where they go, okay, so you have a point and you have a line. So you have a line and you have a point that's not on this line. Okay. There's only one line that goes through that point that makes that line parallel to this other line that you have. Does it make sense to yeah. Mitch? He's, he's like, I'm fucking out of here. Because <laughs> I know it makes sense to you because you deal with this stuff a lot, but that's why I'm asking. <laughs> right? so, so you have a point, you have a line, you have a point not on the line. There's only yeah. one line that goes through that point that is also parallel. It's like a unique line, okay? Right. Um, uh, Mitch said he had to go help Aristotle or something. Just had to go do something. Okay, so... Um, that seems perhaps obvious. I don't know. I remember when I took geometry and I was like, well, that just seems obvious, right? Uh, uh, right. Uh, we'll say today for a lot of students, it is not obvious. Like even the kids who are in like honors classes, things like well, that. Well, hold on. But the thing is, it's not obvious. But yeah. they, it's probably not obvious to them for the wrong reasons. Like It's, to, it's not you know obvious I mean? yeah. to them because they just don't know math. <laughs> they're just like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But to me, it just seemed like intuitively obvious. But yeah. but that's only because you've really accepted these postulates already and unconsciously, you know, kind of like right. this point of it's obvious that logic and mathematics, you're going to it's going to be true. Yeah. And this is the problem with trying to use logic to to somehow prove there's only two genders. It, and it's it, also interesting. It, 
in geometry, like you would have to do proofs. It would be like, prove that this line going through this point is parallel to this other line, you know, given that blah, 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 prove that, you know? And so you are, you have to work with those assumptions. Keep going. Well, okay. And I just thought of a way to like, kind of give an example here where logic works and doesn't work. So you might be like, okay, so how do you do these proofs? You take the assumptions that you have and you start looking at based on these assumptions, what are some implications of what these assumptions make? And then like, for example, um, I'm trying to think of a really, a really easy one. Um, you have three uh, points and they're all connected with line segments. Okay. <laughs> Prove that it's a triangle. Well, yeah, but the problem is that's the definition of a triangle. Of a, of a triangle yeah, that's true. Right? <laughs> In a way, it's not exactly, but um, um, okay. Uh, um, here, here's one that I think you have to, that you can prove. It's not, it's not an assumption. If you have a line segment, okay. And then you put a point somewhere on that line segment. So now you have two line segments that make up the entire line segment, right? The length of the entire line segment is equal to the sum of the other two, the lengths of the other two. Okay. Right? That would be something that you could prove. Huh? Use a different word than line segment. Cause I think you'll lose a lot of people in line segment. Like if you have a ruler, and you put oh, a point like, on that ruler. Right? If you take a stick <laughs> and you cut it somewhere, the lengths of these two pieces are the same as the length of the original stick. There right? you go. Perfect. <laughs> Which is actually not technically true. Yeah. Technically, it's not true because when you cut that, you remove some of the wood. So technically, yeah, yeah. it's not true. But with line segments, it's ideal. So there's no loss. So how do you put that point and then take them apart? And then think about this. You have one point, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can take them apart, right? Mm -hmm. But that one point just became two points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we there's an infinite number of points. So we got plenty. We could just make it into two. You know, that, that logically doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. so what does it mean to separate those two line segments and move them around? Now they're two separate, but then you put them back together and now it's only one point. Did that one, two points have to like squish together somehow? Like it doesn't act. If you start really breaking it down, you're like, hmm. I'm not saying there's a flaw within it, but it, did you ever question that? Did you even yeah. think about like, oh, yeah, actually that makes sense, right? So can there be yeah. two genders or whatever, right? Um, okay, so think about this. The, the way in which you prove something in mathematics, okay? So you're in your geometry class, they give you these assumptions and then you start proving stuff. But how do you know the 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 rat, the the reasoning that you're using to prove the things is valid. Uh, like, like for example, it. right. But, but a plus B equals C or uh, let me think of an example. Okay. Um, if a equals B and B equals C, then a equals C. A equals B and B equals C then a equals C. Yes. And we're like, yeah, of course. Right. Duh. Yeah. Right. Obviously. Now, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of a, a example where that doesn't hold, but I'm sure we could find an example in a different context where it doesn't hold. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's called the I think that's called the transitive property. Right. Yeah. That would be like um, here's here's on. If a guy marries a girl and then she marries some other guy. Those two guys are not the same. <laughs> there you go. Okay. The transitive property so, doesn't work. Right. So it's not, but the bit, the thing is we're applying the transitive property to this relation called marrying instead of to this relation called equals. Yeah. So it's the transitive property, which is this is somehow related to this in some way. And that's related to that in the same way. So these two must be related in the same way. Like for example, um, yeah, that's a good example. I'm trying to think of even more direct one. Like, um, but I think with with family relations, you could probably come up with something. But yeah, anyways, the point is that transitive property doesn't always hold. So you might. So now my question is, that's obvious, right? Like to to anyone, if you're like, well, if A marries B, 
Did you hear that? Was yeah, that that, my side? yeah, I was on your side. There's some vibration. Oh, it was just a video started playing on my YouTube. Uh, um, sorry, if A marries B and B marries C, does that mean A marries C? Or does that mean that A and C are the same person? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't even mean they're the same. But in the context of um, equals, A and yeah. C would be the same. Yeah. They'd have to be the same value, right? So it's just an example where you can see, okay, this idea of the transitive property applies to certain contexts, but not necessarily to another context. So, but that's a way of reasoning. If you just okay. automatic, and you know, remember that video, you want to describe that point we were talking about with the, uh, uh, um, no, 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 uh, no, 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 um, the, uh, the negative one twelve thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was interesting. It was like, man, but there's so much map context within that. <laughs> but okay, the idea is basically yeah, this. I know it's 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 a, what's so interesting about it is just not that much math. But I but but I but I, I know you're right. Like people would not be able to follow it probably. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it just basically... shows how how dumbed down we've become. And it's not because I think anybody listening to this is stupid. It's just because I know that vocabulary is not effectively integrated. So when you're discussing it, like. If you had some Tesla engineers and they were talking high level Tesla engineering, most people would be like not able to follow it, but they can follow it. Right. It is not because they're smarter per se. It's right. because where versus if they were listening, okay, they're so smart. That's why. Right. But that's if they true. were listening to two fucking professors of medieval literature discuss like the details of some, I don't know, fucking whatever, <laughs> like they'd be like, I'm not following you anymore. Love the what? What are you talking about? Because they I, don't know, have the vocabulary. It's not because of it. They can have the exact same level of intelligence, IQ. I was, I was making this point domains. yesterday of how like, because uh, I was describing Chris Langan to somebody who has Technotutor and has listened to like um, some Bernard audios. And but I did so. the list. Uh, I understand CTMU. I don't understand why. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I was describing to him like how uh, Chris Langan has come to very similar conclusions as Bernard. And it's funny because if you listen to Chris Langan, um, I, I think for the vast majority of people, their experience is this sounds like nonsense. Like I, I, I can't follow. Just to be clear, like come to similar conclusions from the perspective of um, having a vocabulary to describe how do I explain it? It's not the same conclusions per se, like purely. No, but no, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just being that. clear with that. Yeah. I know, yeah. you know that I'm just being clear with everybody else. We're not I understand going, that because oh, like, if, uh, Chris Langan figured out destiny. No, not exactly. No, That's if, not what we're he saying. Came to the same conclusions. He'd be doing this. <laughs> like, it, it, it'd be <laughs> like, it'd be like if you just discovered a way of, um, well, it's like somebody built a house and someone else had a way of, of being able to describe in some ways why that house is able to stand up or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a bad analogy, but it's like, it's not they're able to build that house per se. It's okay. I gave a bad analogy on the last podcast. I said something about like, you know, phonics being like pressing oil in the old fashioned way, but I, I came up with a better analogy. Okay. I came up with a better one. It's like, Phonics is like building that car in the Flintstones, you know, and like it's all made of stone and everything, and you're you're still actually pushing it with your feet <laughs> versus like a real car, you know. <laughs> that's that's a better analogy, I think. Versus a self driving car. <laughs> versus a self driving car. Yeah. I mean, wasn't that the first self driving car? <laughs> Yourself was driving. It's it. literally self that's driving it. Yeah. Yeah um so i have faith that you'll come up with a better analogy but anyway um but i was just describing like how when chris langan speaks it's like people find that to be quote-unquote nonsensical but it's really just that they don't understand it you know in, in the same way that like um somebody will listen to you know <laughs> i see you're holding something in <laughs> is it a fart <laughs> all right ice spice um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, 
it was it was just I'm just looking at all the implications of of what you're saying and why you know that 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 is and just on that point, well, what he's saying is nonsense. Um, if if I were to go like okay, this 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 paper right here, this mathematical paper was written by an MIT Nobel Prize winning scientist, you know, and it proves uh, that um, you know the universe started with the big bang and you just said a bunch of stuff that people already agree with. You know what I mean? Or maybe you didn't even explain the context contents. You just gave all the credentials. This is a Nobel prize winning scientist. He was the scientific advisor to both the Biden and Trump administration and, you know, five presidents back. And he's the head of the national science department and so forth. Right. And then you started reading the paper to them. Yeah. Would they be like, oh, yes, oh, I agree with his conclusion there. That makes perfect sense. Or would they be like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but obviously it's true. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But if you go, this is a guy who's never been to college. He's never had any degrees. Uh, he used to work as a bouncer in a bar. Um, and, you know, uh, he's totally rejected by all science establishments and can't get his papers published anywhere. And you start reading it, they'll be like, well, that's obviously nonsense. Right. Right, yeah, and you listen to him talk, and you're like, I mean, clearly he's just using a bunch of pseudo scientific words. And then if you hear him talking to another scientist, and the scientist is like, uh, yeah, you know, they're like disagreeing with him. You're like, clearly the scientist is right. Right, right, right. See, but I don't. To me, when when I'm and it, at first when I'm listening to him, it didn't make sense. But I wasn't saying like it doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense. I'm like, I can't make sense of it yet because right. I don't fully understand what these words mean. So let me go a little bit further. Let me understand it, and I'm like, oh yeah i see what he's saying here this this makes a lot of sense and and it's just that point of rejecting something because it wasn't given the authority of the system and and then i want to go somewhere with that point like maybe a little bit as we talk and so forth because that's kind of what we're getting at but yeah yeah go ahead the point that i was making was basically like it's not nonsense like just because it seems like nonsense doesn't mean it could be like but just because just because he he isn't mainstream or something doesn't mean automatically it's not nonsense. Right. Just and, to be and, clear. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and the point that I'm trying to make is like for a lot of people, they will like my experience with um, reading the blogs at the first time was like, this is nonsense. <laughs> like, like it was nonsensical to me in the sense that I could not make sense of it. Like it, it did not make sense to me. Um, but then building my vocabulary and like actually going back and reading it again. I'm like, Oh shit, this makes a lot of sense. This is so cool. Right. And so it, it wasn't nonsense um, except for to me, it was just that I could not make sense of it. And and the, I think the problem that a lot of people have is that um, unless it has the quote unquote blessing of the system, you know, of the authority figure or whatever that says like, yes, this is, this is approved. This is sanctioned then whatever seems like nonsense to them is in their eyes. Like it is nonsense. Not that it's like something that oh, See, I just don't and, understand. Yes. Yes. It, but the problem though, like kind of like I said before is they will, because it has the blessing, assume it is not nonsense. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even though they don't understand it. Yes. 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 Right. Like yeah. it, it. And so a perfect example of this, um, and we've talked about this like a long time ago, like years ago, we talked about string theory and so forth, right? Cause I started reading about string theory and all that. And I saw this great video. I don't know if I sent it to you. It was this, this girl or oh, woman. She's like, I think she's a physicist or something. I'm assuming I'm not exactly sure, but, uh, she knows a lot about science and physics and so forth. Did you and just she assume has... her scientific credentials? Well, Yeah. I did. No, but clearly she has some kind of PhD or something just based on her knowledge level and like the way she talks about it. Right. So not that it matters, but that's just, you can see where she's coming from. Right. Um, But she had this really cool video on string theory and she was talking about science communication. You know, like, you know, you have Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Mm -hmm. He's actually like a science communicator. Like, yes, he has degrees in like astro whatever, but but he's, he's a science communicator. Like that's his primary career. To you communicate I mean? science to the masses. Yeah, is that, exactly. Is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't like, know who I the hired... science guy? Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not saying, I don't know if he's got an official function in some government thing, or if that's just the role he's chosen for himself, but he's not, he's not like, as far as I can see doing science. 
right, right, right. is just out there talking about science for whatever reason. I don't know. In a very right? condescending way. <laughs> in a very condescending way, in a very smarmy way, right? Yeah. Um, and, okay, so it, it's so interesting because when you hear things and then you look at all the points of reference back in your memory, and you're like, that makes that make sense. Like that, I've, I've seen that before. And she was talking about, she was talking about why there's a lot of distrust of physicists specifically now. Hmm. Like when people talk about like the Large Hadron Collider or something and everyone's like, oh, it's a bunch of bullshit, you know? Hmm. Yeah. And, and she was just kind of explaining how, uh, how with string theory, it's all this theory and all, everything she said back made sense based on everything I'd studied. But she was basically saying how, you know, you had all this theory, right? And then the theory is supposed to make predictions. And they would say, well, in 10 years, we'll be able to prove this. But then 10 years would pass and it would never come to fruition. Hmm. And then they would, then string theory would kind of go out of favor. And then somebody would come up with some new ideas and be like, well, in 10 years, we'll be able to prove this. And then it was just constantly always like that. Okay. And she said, um, people have this had this perception for a while of like, yeah, but string theory gives you results because look at the Large Hadron Collider. They found the Higgs boson and all this stuff. And she was explaining how all of that stuff that was apparently proven or whatever or discovered was was predictions made by what they call the standard model. It wasn't made with the string theory model. And she was explaining how string theory has never produced any anything that's outside of the standard model anyways, but nothing unique that would verify the theory itself. It's still just a theory and in a very loose sense it's like a mathematical thing somebody came up with that sounds it's a very complex and sounds very good but cannot be applied and shown to, to produce any usable results hmm. and she said this kept happening over and over but then you have like the celebrity string theorists who would go on like a neil degrasse tyson of string theory you know like uh, brian green or somebody right and they would and i remember when i was a kid or a teenager or you know, somewhere around that age my dad watching, you know, the elegant universe DVD, or I don't know if it was out by the, back then or whatever, but something yeah, yeah. like that about string theory. And it was so interesting and all of this, you know, and you see all those, the graphics and all this, but it's literally just someone's imagination. Mm. That's, that's how, you know, and I'm not going to act like I've totally studied every single thing about this, but that's how I see dinosaurs. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, if somebody could prove me wrong. Cause I, again, I don't have all the facts, you know, but, but, I haven't been able, I haven't seen any actual, anybody able to prove me wrong. Like, it's like you find a bone or a couple bones and then and like, just they, like they, they, they make up the together. rest. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they make up the rest. And right. I'm not saying there's never been any complete skeleton of anything ever found and that hasn't ever happened. But um, imagine you find this really large bone and it could actually be a fucking giant sized human for all you know. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, no. In my ideas, this is what this is why I imagined it to be because of X, Y, Z. And I put this together. And I thought of this and it all seems plausible. Yeah. And then other people, they get that book and they have their ideas and they studied it. So that's their degree. And then they start making stuff. And, and before you know it, you have museums that exist that have all these dinosaur bones. And then you find out they're not real. Yeah. And what's funny is that is a fact. And someone would think I'm crazy for saying it. Right. For believing a fact. Yeah. Like they would think, oh, you're crazy for believing that when it's a fact. Yeah. You go to the museum and say like, are those actual real bones I'm looking at? They will say, no, they're like, whatever they're made of. Like they're not real. Plaster. And uh, this is the. Like, but clearly they have that whole thing somewhere, right? Well, no, and, they have like a leg bone and like a right. piece of the jaw over here. And like, like they have like three bones of that whole skeleton. Like in and, the in, and in many museums, at least the last time I, I checked, in many museums, um, they still will put a little plaque there that will tell you which of these bones they had found. And it would say like, you know, this was constructed based on this leg bone, like literally and what they're assuming is a, a leg bone at that, you know? And, and so it, it's a, it's really interesting. I like the way you, you, you put that out there. I like the way you put that out there because it's like, you're okay. So assuming this is even a leg bone of a reptile of some sort, then it might look like this. But then you'd have to first start off with the assumption that it is even a bone of a reptile, even a leg, you know, or, or whatever. 
which would be fine if it was like, hey, here's a theory we have. Maybe this is what it is. But that is not how it is presented. It is presented as absolute fact. And then when some other information comes along, it's like they update the facts and then pretend like, oh, yeah, no, this, this is just a fact now. Instead of going like, this is all a theory this whole time. We've got some new information. We're going to shift our theory, but we're still not certain. Yeah, th that reminds me of when I was growing up, I used to watch Animal Planet all the time all the time it was the only thing i was allowed to watch on tv really <laughs> I freaking live on animal planet over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and 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 so you know it's funny animal we, farm more like we went we went out hiking yesterday and the there's like a sign that says there's a bunch of feral hogs and uh and then it said that the uh trail would be closed from this day to this day because uh, they were going to do some control on the feral hogs. And I was like, damn, how do I become a part of that? That sounds like fun. You're like, I I got a 308. Where can I, where do I sign yeah, up? I, like, <laughs> where do I sign up? Like, I I know how this works. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, the, what was I saying for fucking animal? Hey, that reminds me though. We should set up a time where like some of us come down here and go do that. That would be fun. I'd like that. Because like Trey knows how to do it. Like he's like, oh yeah, I know where like the path is. He just, we've been waiting until like the hunting scene's over, which I think it just ended or whatever. So yeah, he's like, yeah, we'll go out there on the side-by-side -side with some rifles and go get some hogs. I'm like, that'll be cool. That's awesome. Um, All right. So, okay. That's what I say. I used to watch Animal Planet all the time. And uh, I used to love, I don't know why, for some strange reason, I really loved uh, Komodo dragons and I, I think it was just because they had the name dragon you know like which is why probably. probably they yeah somebody and, and, made their name doing creating the whole myth around Komodo dragons how amazing they are you know yeah yeah like it was but, like their specialty you know what I mean like they majored in Komodo dragons so they they like it's like a whole marketing thing they they got me they got me because yeah. <laughs> I because the animal itself like I'm like it's just a big it's lizard. whatever it's a yeah. big fucking lizard. It's not, that, it's not that great. It's like a <laughs> giant iguana. Yeah. But I, I remember I was obsessed with Komodo dragons. And Hold on, but, but when you were, how old were you, do you think? Uh, probably like seven, eight, somewhere around there. Right. Like my same age. I mean, I didn't become obsessed with it, but I remember it being like, oh, Komodo dragons, Komodo dragons. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Komodo dragon. Like it was fucking impulsed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody made a point to fucking impulse everybody with these Komodo dragons. How amazing. And something right. like how many species of animals exist on the planet? Oh, fucking. Billions. And why the fuck do we know about Komodo dragons specifically? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why does it seem like an important animal? Yeah. It's just another fucking animal that exists. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But I remember at that time, the belief was that um, they had thought that there was venom in uh, the Komodo dragon's like saliva or something. But then uh, they realized that it's not venom. It is uh, just the bacteria in the Komodo dragon's mouth uh, causes whatever animal they bite to deteriorate. Um, because it, it gets an infection, right? And I remember there was a parallel of that to, um, they believed that something similar with some of the uh, uh, dinosaurs that would like prey on other dinosaurs, the, the carniv carnivorous ones, anyway. And, uh, and they were saying like, oh, just like back then, uh, that's what happened, that the dinosaurs would, you know, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex wouldn't actually kill uh, an animal, it would bite into them and then track them down later when they became infected and then they would eat them. Right. And so I remember that being the case. And I, I remembered that point, like very strongly. And then at a certain point, they completely flipped that story. And, and actually, if you go to some zoos, like uh, probably the zoo in Washington, DC, maybe it might still have this up there. But there, there's a, you know, a plaque or whatever that, that's on the wall that says that they believed that it was bacteria. At first, they believed it was venom. Then they thought it was bacteria. And now they realize that it actually was venom the whole time. There's like a small trace amount of venom within the saliva that actually paralyzes the, the animal. Guys, this, now we now we know. 
Now, this right. is the time where we know. The other right. two times we were guessing, we said we knew, but we knew we were guessing. Right. Now we know and we're not guessing. We promise. Please believe us. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, and so that's what the whole dinosaur thing reminds me of is just like, you know, because they will say like, oh, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, these ones have feathers. Yeah, feathers. And you're like, wait, what? Like, when when did they all start getting feathers? And like, no, all the dinosaurs always had feathers. Like, what? Like when? feathers? What are you talking about? What? And there's no feathers on dinosaurs? And it's yeah. like, but there they wasn't fucking real from the beginning anyways. Yeah, yeah. It ends up, it's like, watch, 100 years from now, they'd be like, there was no dinosaurs. There was just birds. <laughs> we always said there was birds. There was no pudding dinosaurs. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. Yeah. But yeah. but what's so fascinating now is imagine if you got angry that we were talking about dinosaurs or not, what we think they are, or it's just a theory. They might be, they might not be. People get angry. Yeah, people get angry about space. They get angry. People get angry about space. They get angry about all these things because it's like they'll get angry about saying that logic and mathematics and science is not the end all be all of truth. Yeah. Because you have all this emotion wrapped up because you watch so many National Geographic shit and it's like just in your memory. You don't realize how much you've been indoctrinated and programmed and it's been embedded into you, you know, and another interesting point. Okay. I want to go back real quick. Remember we're talking about geometry and how you have these assumptions and then you have these like a property, like the transitive property and you just assume it applies, but you had to be taught that property in the first place. Right. Like they had to teach you when you were a kid, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Right. That's called the transitive property. They teach you this, right? Yeah. If, if it was obvious and it was common sense, they wouldn't have had to teach you. But you think, okay, well, I was just ignorant, so I didn't know, right? Well, how do you know when it applies? Because if it's so, if it's just like, oh, I just didn't realize, it, it is actually self-evident, but I just didn't know it somehow because I was born stupid or something, right? Sure. But but it is it is obvious, right? It is obviously that's how things work. Okay. Does it always apply? Does the transitive property always apply? In right. every case. And you're like, right. uh, and then you realize, oh, I guess it doesn't. So when does it apply? Is it obvious when it applies? It, it only, I'm not saying it only applies in mathematics, but you were specifically taught it because it applied in that context. Right. So now imagine the transitive property. Apply that same uh idea like it can apply here but it doesn't apply there and that doesn't make this over here invalid like the idea of a woman marries this guy uh, and the woman marries this guy and these two guys are not obviously married it's because it's a different context that that relation it doesn't hold up even in mathematics okay watch okay um uh a what's to do with the number seven times equals wait uh, you cut out there seven times what seven times three uh, uh, equals 21 okay 21. three times seven equals 21 okay you reverse it it works right that's the commutative property right 10 divided by five two five divided by ten no that doesn't work it's one half it doesn't work in that case yeah so in the one case, it obviously, so addition, two plus three is five. Three plus two is five. Five minus three is two. Three minus five is negative two. So the commutative yeah. property works for a multiplication and uh, addition, addition. Yeah. but not for subtraction and division, which are just the inverses of those other two. So yeah. you would think, why doesn't it work? There's a reason why it doesn't work. It's not relevant. Why? But the point is that that should that's an obvious thing, right? But it's not obvious. Because yeah. how many little kids, when they're young and you're like trying to teach them addition and subtraction, they, that's a hard thing for them to get is like five plus three is eight. Three plus five is eight. Okay. Negative three minus two or negative three plus two or negative three minus negative. Is it, you start getting confused and like, right, right, right. and it's not obvious. You yeah. can't just reverse it or whatever. So um, you have even in mathematics examples where something that, so you can't just be like, oh, well, that type of reasoning is just obvious. It's not. It's there is no such thing as a reason. A type of reasoning is obvious. It only applies to a specific to specific contexts. Yeah. So the ones that it applies to, and how do you know? You have to really be careful and check it out and see what is the actual result. You can't be like because it's logical, therefore it's true. You have to go. Okay, here's a logic. 
this says this is true. Let me go find out in reality, is it true? Yeah. You can't say because it's logical, it's true. Because it's logical, it might be true. I think, I think so, the, yeah. The there's a that, domain, there's like a domain of things where within logic, it will be true using logic, but there's a domain of things where using logic, it won't be true. I, so you were bringing up this point when we were talking the other day about like, uh, you didn't say it this way, but I'm going to say it this way and then you can, you can correct it. But like, um, you have to be careful what you accept as your assumption, as your base assumption. That's basically the gist of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of the example here is like, um, if you assume, I don't know, the, the easy example is if you assume, um, the big bang, then, you know, all these other things about the universe make sense in this context, but then that means anything outside of that doesn't. Okay. Make like sense. for example, yeah, we were talking about, it's like, okay, if you, uh, like the myth that we're talking about. Yeah. 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 So like, uh, you, we have this oh, myth, okay, right? yeah. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Let, in, in, in the beginning of the universe, there was hang nothing. on can we can we go further back can we go further back before the beginning <laughs> before the beginning of the universe the free beginning the preface the, free beginning. the preface yeah, to the, the universe preface, the preface to the beginning of the universe let's just flip it over <laughs> read the back of the universe you know and then we get the gist of it i got We're the good. synopsis i got it it's okay all right i'll just read the cliff notes um no but further back being um that we as humans live on fiction like, like well, we th have this is kind of the point is like, okay. yeah, like we, we have stories and we have myths and we have narratives and we have these stories literally. Yeah. Right. And, and then within that story is there's types, there's logic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. mean logic, meaning the, like logic as in mathematics. I mean, there's a logic. Okay. So great example would be, um, we have the myth of money or the fiction of money. A story of money, which is like you, we all agree that this little piece of paper or whatever, or these numbers in a certain account has some sort of value to it. Max then, tells me the other day, he goes, you know, if you left uh, some dollar bills out in the rain, like they wouldn't dissolve. And I'm like, really? He goes, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I know that. I wonder, I wonder what that's about. And he was like, it's because it's made of a and he like gave me the exact definition of like the type of cotton that it's made out of or whatever. And mm -hmm. he's like, so it's not actually paper. And I'm like, oh yeah. But I know we are like, that's so funny because we call it paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like yeah, literally yeah. not. It's like literally like fabric. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyways. They, they call it paper so that, you know, when you're trying to- It was just cool because like, he like, you know, he told me all that, right? They said, yeah. oh, it doesn't grow on trees. And then we like, yeah, it does made of paper. Actually, <laughs> it, it doesn't grow on trees, but it does grow on a cotton plant, I guess. It does grow on plants. There you go. Yeah. 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 It's linen of some sort. Anyway, well, didn't we go to like Colorado, the federal bank? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And they had the Federal Reserve Branch with like a museum yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. And we saw like, I remembered money about being that. Minted. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, okay. So we all agree on this thing that's not actually real, it's a myth. Because, you know, if if we all died, people weren't there. It's not the that it's not real. Value. Yeah, it does, doesn't mean it's not real, though. It just means that, hold on, Let, let's go back to the other point. Because I think that it's a little bit too convoluted for people because they have all these ideas about money and like there's like an emotional part to it. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of like money's not real. And it's like, well, but it is real. I mean, it has effects. We do it's yeah, just we do use it. <laughs> but you're valid in this, you're you're right in the sense of like it's the story we tell about money to ourselves and what it is and where it comes from and why it exists and what's the because value of it. Agree that, on that. That's what makes it right. That determines kind of the outflow of of the reality of money. Right. Because like there's a reality to something in terms of the effects it produces, even if the thing itself is not per se real. Yeah. Right. Like marriage isn't real okay yeah it's it's an agreement that's yeah. not real but by by living that agreement you are creating a reality of yeah. it you yeah, know yeah, so yeah. It, it is real it's just real in a in a different sense of like it's a physical tangible object do you know what yeah. i mean because you can say money's not a physical tangible but we do have physical tangible things that we've created as money right so 
but okay but let's let's go back to this point of the the universe right so obviously you have religious people who believe god created the universe okay but that's not the really the that's not really the popular version right now right the popular version is and it's really actually fundamentally not different but we'll just go to like the the evolution type story right billions of years ago there was nothing there was inanimate matter that somehow came into existence this inanimate, inanimate matter for billions of years somehow it just randomly created some bang together i don't know and then it created life life appeared right and then not, that wasn't too long ago and then even more recently than that you have self-aware conscious life like human beings and that kind of stuff right that can reflect on these things and i think most people you know even even i think religious people most religious people maybe not all but i think even most religious people actually accept that even if they like disagree with it sure it's like it's still accepted deep down at a certain level yeah well i i might even i think that i know that yeah because it's just, it's just like liberal religionism today like it, it it's like you're even if you believe in god the problem is you've still been programmed that what i said was true and so you still operate as if it's true even yeah. though you believe something else yeah right um it's like if you said i believe in myself but the way you act is in total lack of self-confidence you say mm -hmm. well I, I believe that i can do it but the way you act is not in accordance with that belief so you can believe something but that's not yeah. the same as you knowing it right yeah, yeah, yeah. so so but th the point is that is a that is a story that is a myth it is not provable it, yeah. it, it's just something that we accept so yeah what if the reverse is true though instead of saying that this inanimate matter created life you could flip it and be like life always existed and that's what creates matter that's what creates everything is existing because life exists now and people would probably look at that most and be like that's a little kooky i like how you were like listen people have you know, a feeling about money. And, and so that's going to be kind of challenging. Let's go back to the universe thing. Let's go back to God. Right? Let's, let's go back to life and God. <laughs> I know. I, here's what I really was thinking when I said that is like, they're going to go, they're going to get distracted from what we're talking about by going off. Their mind's going to go off into like, yeah, fuck the federal reserve and all like, they're going to mm. go off. They're like, their mind's going to take them off into thinking about that instead of like, yeah, the yeah. Point trying to make, right? yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. So, uh, what's so interesting is like well how could life always just exist here like there had to have been some physical thing that existed it's like but the whole premise of your idea about the physical matter story was that there was nothing and then it came into existence yeah so it's not like so your logic you is self-defeating if you're going to use that logic against this point right and and the difference though why does it matter because one story imbues your life and reality with a certain type of meaning and the other story imbues it with a different type of meaning the one story which is the popular story and even the story of god is the same story as that which is the inert matter yeah because even though you're like well no but it seems more like the other one because there's like something that's alive that lives that creates things yeah but the problem is you're still separating yourself from it. And you're like, I'm just a part of the inanimate matter stuff that God created. And I'm, I'm like a, I'm like in the reality, but I'm not the one creating it. So if life always existed first and created everything else, then we, the part of us that is alive is a part of that original point, which means we're ultimately responsible for everything. But if you flip it and you're like something else existed and then I came into existence mm -hmm. as a result of some process, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm not ultimately responsible. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so and that's why I said before, like equality can't exist if there's a, a God. Yeah. Because then you're still there's still a hierarchy. And so you're just abdicating responsibility. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I want to say this before we keep going because uh, you've made this point and uh, I was reading this as well and it was so interesting because 
it's it's this point of like, and I think you you'd said this actually on uh, one of the, one of our meetings, but um, you'd said something to the effect of like, if if it's based on a feeling, for instance, uh, here's the point that I wanted to make: uh, self esteem. What is self esteem? I think a lot of people consider self esteem as like you regard yourself highly and you feel good about yourself, right? But self-esteem itself is not actually a feeling. It's a, it's how do you act in the world? Like it's, it's a continuous action. It's a, it's a practice. It's a, like, and, and so I was just bringing that up because you were saying that point specifically about like belief, like, you know, you can say that you believe in yourself and this is, and I'm, specifically bringing this up because i see this all the time especially with um specifically like spiritual people and you know just people our age <laughs> you know that, like it's as if they feel or are afraid that if they do not quote unquote believe in themselves that then their life will go to shit but actually they're not they don't have any belief in themselves because they operate as if they don't have any belief in themselves, but they have to say out loud and, and, you know, tell that they believe in themselves and, and they just want their kids to have like confidence and, and belief in themselves. But there's this really cool phrase. You can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't possess. Right. And, and so you can't give your child self-esteem if you don't yourself possess self-esteem and it's also the point of like why you should be learning alongside your children if you don't already know all these things that you like want your children to learn but anyway that's my sidebar there mm. yeah um okay where else do you want to go with these points uh let's uh let's go to um there's a point that we left untied, but I forgot which point. Well, okay, let, let's go back to the logic point, okay? Because that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So it makes sense that you can have logic, but in itself, it doesn't necessarily always apply in every situation. Another example of this that I think is even more, we'll get at the core of this point, is like, okay, um, Uh, okay. Can something be two different things at the same time? And I'm not trying to be funny with the words like, oh, I can be a father and a brother. I don't mean like that. I mean, like a light switch. Can it be on and off? No. It can either be on or off, right? And that's like gender, right? You're either a male or a female, right? You're a man or a woman, right? Um, but the logic of that applies to the physicality of the design of what that thing is i just i just came up with this title for this one you ready did you just assume my axioms we'll work on it drake but <laughs> I, i've got some notes i'll i've got some notes for you on that one it's a um, good one it's a good one. Oh, actually yeah now that i look at it yeah yeah Jeez. Um, sometimes you complain that my titles are too long. My title suggestions are too long. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> okay. So, title. but but okay. So the the light switch can either be on or off. That's obvious, right? So logic, things can be one thing or the other thing. Therefore, if I look at gender, obviously, it can either be one or the other. Right. Hmm. See, because I applied logic to it, right? Okay. What about quantum mechanics? Yeah, no. Now you got the uh, the coin that can be on its side, <laughs> right? Or like light. Is it a wave or a particle? It's yeah. both. Yeah. Right. Um, and you have quantum superposition where things can be in in multiple states at once. Hmm. Right. So, um, how do you know? And I'm not. I'm not questioning my gender. Okay. I'm just saying, how do you know that which logic applies? Maybe, maybe gender operates on a quantum level. 
And so you can be multiple genders and one day you can choose one and you can collapse that wave and then you can reobserve it and hold it in a state of super, super position and collapse it into a different gender the next day. Yeah. How do you, if, which <laughs> logic applies? If the people who you might know, be like, well, but, but we get results with this logic. You can get results with both logics, depending on where it's applied to. You can't get the right result with the wrong logic. If the people who are gender fluid had the vocabulary that you have, man. <laughs> Quantum gender. Quantum gender. That'd be crazy. That, that, that actually sounded like pretty convincing. That was like, that was good. <laughs> I'm a quantum gender computer. Quantum gender. I identify as a quantum computer. Therefore, I can have whatever gender I want at all times. There you at go. Anytime. Yeah. Um, it's like if somebody says like, your your gender is binary then it's like well that's just because you're still like operating on their fucking like old ass computers you know exactly exactly don't you know we're um, in 2024 jeez we're in 2024 like quantum computing guys come on yeah quantum gender and, and you know i can choose whatever gender in the past even but then once i choose it then it's collapsed so <laughs> but you could use a quantum eraser oh you could that's right. write history um okay so i guess my whole point there is just that you you don't know what because you can't say there's just one such thing called logic mm -hmm. does that make sense like you can't say logic is this because if you talk about mathematical logic that rule does those rules those those reasoning processes those those relationships don't necessarily apply over here in this context right um and they don't even apply across all mathematical contexts yeah like going going back to that that um geometry example we were talking about that idea about the parallel lines where you have the point and you have a line and there's only one unique line that goes through this point that's parallel to that other line yeah that that's a that's if you go study geometry it's a postulate it's yeah. an axiom it's it's not an axiom but it's called a postulate meaning they're just asserting it because they figured out they couldn't prove it one way or the other they can't prove it's false they can't prove it's true it's just not able to be proven in with the assumptions they started with so yeah. they're like we have to make another assumption and that leads to all the job the rest of the geometry that you learn it even leads to the point of how many degrees you know people say like how many degrees are in a triangle 180 right in terms of yeah. if you add them up all the angles but if you don't make that assumption about the parallel lines at that point you can get triangles that have more or less than 180 degrees. Yeah, definitely more. You know, and someone's like, well, how is that possible? Well, think about a sphere and you have three points on a sphere and you connect those points that forms a triangle on that sphere. Yeah. Those lines are right. But then that's going to be less than 180 degrees, right? Because those lines might be like intersecting like, or, you know, come together like that or something. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but that's a different type of geometry that like a sphere doesn't exist in, in that same context. It doesn't exist in the Euclidean geometry where right. you go, okay, we're going to make this, this thing called the parallel postulate. And we're going to assume this is true because people said, what happens if I assume it's not true? And they come up with all kinds of other geometries that have certain applications and things. And this is why Terrence Howard went crazy because of the symbols. Because the symbols. <laughs> But it, like it's interesting because people thought he was crazy just because he was speaking in a different context. It's just like, hey, you guys are really limited in the way that you're thinking. Because he was saying stuff like, you can have a, a triangle that is not 180 degrees. Look, honestly, and everyone's like, what? what are you talking about, dude? Like everyone knows you have 180 degrees in a triangle. Like, right. actually, if you paid attention in school, they fucking told you that you don't that just you didn't get that lesson you didn't remember any of that and everyone knows you can't divide by zero why because you get an error on your calculator right you know <laughs> like, i don't know it's, it's infinity or a lot of people you ask them what's zero divided by zero and they go zero i thought you yeah. couldn't divide by zero oh yeah that's right you're not supposed to divide it by zero yeah see but they didn't know why why is it not one why is zero divided by zero not one yeah isn't anything divided by itself one yeah <laughs> The hell? Oh, it's like oh shit which is it damn so okay so what we're we talking about so logic i'm, I'm yeah. really just trying to find ways to support people to see like 
logic is not this thing that you thought it was. Yeah, the UCI that does thing. Mean, that doesn't mean. See the the problem with conspiracy theorists is when they find out there's a problem with something, they just throw it out. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that. In, and, and then and then you end up thinking like everyone's a clone. Do you know, Do you know what I mean? Do you ever see that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like like they're, they're like you're you're like studying <laughs> pictures of Biden's earlobe, and you're like, oh, yes, like like why does that matter? <laughs> He's cloned. I'm telling you. I'm telling. It's so interesting because it's like what they're also trying to say is listening. I'll be right back. We're in a simulation. You know, that's basically what they're trying to say, and that nothing around us is real. And they they go a little bit too hog wild with it. I was wondering if, and you can speak on this when you come back. But I was wondering if you wanted to talk about the. Uh, point that you were making on Friday about um, what were you saying? Oh, 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 oh. Specifically, that point of once they find out that something doesn't work, they throw it all out, right? As opposed to, or, or something's not right or or wrong or whatever, they throw it all out. As opposed to um, what we were talking about, which is this process, like you see that the system doesn't work. So what a lot of people want to do is just throw out the entire system, can't yeah. participate in the system, right? As opposed to actually becoming equal to the system, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you, I'm just thinking about it. It's funny because you, you'll be like, well, this system is fucked. I'm not going to participate. So I'm not going to be a part of it. And therefore, um, not be able to change it, obviously. Right. But it's, it's the same. But then they people... still participate. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm just going to go back to work now. Or no, I'm going to go off grid. Dude, that right. is such bullshit, man. Like, th- Okay. But don't participate in the system. So don't take your RV with you. Don't use electricity. In fact, don't use any of the knowledge that you've gotten from the system. Yeah, you just have to become like because it's all bullshit. It's all it's all fucked. It's all invalid. It's all um, evil. Whatever you want to call it. So don't even use. Don't even burn wood because how do you know that that's not just supporting the system? Like because you learned um, that from the system. Okay. Okay. So all right. Basically major point here is you have to consider what are the axioms or the beliefs that you started out with that you said you know this is this is true that you assumed right and so for instance in uh in math like maybe you assume i'm trying to get to the the utm thing but um Well, we'll get to that. I just want to set the stage. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just trying to say that. that's so highly technical. Well, it's not technical, but you know what I mean. It's I, like, I, yes, it's like I if agree. you just give people that, they're not going to get it. But I, I want to be like, but this is the icing on the cake. I agree. Know? I agree. Yeah. Um, but the point is that you have to consider what you've assumed, and the assumption. Ah, oh man, I got an icing for your icing. I just realized what I'm trying to explain right now is an icing for your icing. Dude, that's the icing on the icing. I that's, never even thought about icing on the icing. I but got there icing is like, for your like, icing. That's like the little like a rosettes that you do on top of the icing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rosettes for us. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> he puts forth. <laughs> puts forth. Shout out Zappa. <laughs> about yeah. probably you and me and katie will get that reference in the kids yeah, that's, that's it yeah <laughs> um I'll, so I'll, I'll wait for that one but basically um it's it's relevant here just remember that it's relevant here i i wrote it down so i can come back to it but um it's relevant here but you want to say it later i want to say it later because okay. it, it'll make more sense after oh it. oh got it okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh okay so logic but um, it's just like it's, it, the question that you were bringing up just for relevance sake is um, what, what are you throwing out? Like you, if you're, if you're going off grid, you got to throw out the knowledge too. Cause you're saying it's all fucked. Right. So, so to what extent does that go? That's the relevant question. The thing though, is 
in this process, you will have to throw it all out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying like, no, just accept everything as is. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. But but the, fi the final solution, let's say, cannot be, I'm just going to go off grid. If that yeah. is your final answer, yeah. you know, you have to kind of go off grid for a moment in your mind of like, okay, let me actually question everything. That takes time. That can't just happen. It's not that it can't, it's just, it won't. It, it, yeah. It's going to take time because yeah. you're going to have to really then test and see like, am I still operating under certain assumptions? I mean, that that's something each person gonna have to walk and you don't need to do go declare to anybody. I have broken free from the mages. Like it doesn't matter. It's going to show in your actions. It's like saying, I believe in myself. Why yeah. do you need to tell me if you believe in yourself? You know what I mean? Like, why do you need to say it? Why do you need to tell yourself people yeah. saying people who believe in themselves or who are actually self-confident don't need to say to themselves that they believe in themselves. Why yeah. would they? Like, <laughs> They're already confident. Oh, Oh, that's what I was reading. It was, um... do you think billionaires do affirmations? <laughs> convince yourself that you can do that thing that they're just doing automatically uh okay so you know how like there's um in the galactic series there's uh they, they're they're called the tarani right which is hilarious that's how i'm pronouncing it but i, I get the obvious joke there right um but they're, they're talking about the tyrannian oh you mean because it sounds like tranny <laughs> It is weird that tranny and tyranny sound very similar, though. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, isn't that interesting? Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're talking about the Tyrannian guards, and they're talking about how... LGBT uh, Rex. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking also Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, but they're, they're talking about how there's a sharp dis difference from those guards to the other guards of some other planet or whatever and how those other guards they have to click their heels you know they do a sharp salute and everything and uh the author was making this point of you know you don't with the Tyrannian guards like they're actually in power and they didn't have to do all this like heel clicking or whatever it's like you you know their authority they don't have to signal their authority right and it's, it's the same point it's like if you actually believe it, or if you if you're the king, you don't have to tell everybody. I'm I'm in charge here. I'm, hey guys, I'm in charge. Like everyone knows, like if you're actually in charge, if you have to say you're in charge, you're not a you're not a real ruler. You're not you're not legit. I, I read that somewhere else too. I don't know which book it was. But there's another book that said that basically. I was just like, if uh, the the king that has to let everybody know that he's in charge isn't a good king. Mm. Yeah, where I saw that, but it was good. It's good, good piece of advice there. Interesting. Um, okay, so where are we at? Logic, mathematics. Um, what's What's interesting is when you look at the average person who knows about science, have they ever done science? Really. No. No. Okay. They might've like been in school and like did some quote science class, science experiment stuff, but science they didn't really project. do it. Right. Exactly. Um, but even if you are a scientist, there's a certain level to which there's a, there's a result that you get, there's a validity to what you get, but that doesn't mean that therefore it's the end all be all of everything. Also, it, yeah. if you're a scientist today and even back way back when, you had to have funding. So right. there were specific- Has science ever not been somehow Even... motivated by somebody who had money and wanted power or control? Look at Charles Darwin. Like people think that, oh, he, he just went out to the Galapagos and just studied some fucking animals. Like uh, that guy had money. He came from money. His entire family was like ruling class. Like, no, they're elite people. Yeah, imagine it's the 1800s and you're able to go to a, some island by yourself with your notebook and draw all day. Like, uh, <laughs> you're rich. <laughs> right. right. You're not hunting for your survival, <laughs> you know? I just want to draw. I just want to draw some animals. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and that's, that's a really good point because there's always a political, economic context to everything. You know, that whole story about Galileo discovering 
whatever he discovered or Jupiter or your Copernicus or whatever, yeah. whoever those guys are, right? Yeah. When they discovered those things and the church was like, no, that's not true because the sun revolves around the earth or whatever. Like that was because they had a certain view and they wanted everybody, they wanted to control, right? So, oh, but now we're in the day and age where science is purely done for the benefit of humankind. And it's like, okay, do you really think that's how things work? What about TikTok? You don't, you know, it's just people who are purely driven by greed and just want to, you know, and, <laughs> but not these scientists that are pure, like, dude, that you've just bought into it so much because, because at the end of the day, the whole point of science is to control the environment, scientists is to control are, reality, is to have yeah. power over reality. And everybody wants in themselves through self interest power over reality. And so it's like an implicit acceptance that this is 100% completely valid because it aligns in your starting point. That's all it is. It's not because of it's actually valid in all contexts. Scientists are just priests. Like th that's, that's what scientists have always been is priests actually. Um, yeah. And I'm saying, I'm saying that because it's like the priest class was the class that had enough money at least where their survival needs were taken care of. So they could, you know, fiddle around all day and come up with like all these different ideas and whatnot. Um, but also science is a way of thinking it's it's <laughs> it's like you know the scientific method um is, yeah i heard this cool point somebody was saying like okay uh people would say science is valid because it's successful like you have technology because of it right yeah and I mean, look at all of that. Look at the success of science to create things in our lives, right? At the same time, though, does that mean it tells you what is true? Because the same science that has created all the technology that therefore gave us TikTok is now brainwashing people to be LGBTQ, which it's, contradicts science. It's the same science that has created... Uh all the disease that people get from like the non-nutritious foods that they're eating. And, you know, and then, Oh, we, now we created all these drugs as well to, which in you. some cases actually hurt people more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, we know that the people at the head of those organizations don't have your best interests in mind um, because like, Oh, we didn't mention this, but like uh, there was a case of, was it Bayer? I, I forgot. Oh, yeah. oh, it was Bayer. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. No, that was crazy. That was a crazy story. I didn't know that. Okay. That was the punchline. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, anyway, here's the story. There's a company. Um, so back in, in World War II, uh, you guys have heard of that, right? Uh, there was like these Germans, they called themselves. It was, it was the last time we weren't at peace. According to Noah, you, you Harari. Yeah. We've um, been at peace since then. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, during World War II, there was a, a company that was doing some research and they had written a letter to, I guess, the Nazis or whatever, just basically asking for... Not Hitler directly, though, obviously, according to David <laughs> Irving. According to David Irving, yeah. <laughs> but they had asked for like 150 participants or something like that. Uh, for this research study that they were doing um, and they got 150 Jewish women that were sent to them apparently and uh, they did this study six months later um, they wrote back saying hey um, thank you so much for sending these participants uh, project's study. going great <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately all the participants uh, did not make it don't you know, know but when you're trying to invent the light bulb, you got to fail 10,000 times. You, right? you got to crack a few <laughs> eggs. <laughs> and, crack a few eggs right? and so, uh, so they're like, could you send us some more? Right. And they got sent more and uh, that company turned out to be Bayer. Right. No, it, it is. It was Bayer. <laughs> that company <laughs> was Bayer. <laughs> It is but it turned out to be the bear that you still get your aspirin from. <laughs> yes, exactly. There you go. Isn't that the same one that owns Monsanto or vice versa? Yeah, 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 yeah. They just, one of them just bought each other. They're the same company now. Yeah. Allegedly, it was that bear. Yes, and and so um, the the point there being like 
hey, uh, no, yeah, it's no. the same oh, science. But, but, but no, but the people who run it now, they're not like that. They're different people. <laughs> and it's like, who do you think gets it to the top of those kind of places? Right. <laughs> they're like, there was one day there was a meeting. You know, guys, let's stop doing that evil shit to make money. And let's just make money only by just being really kind and everything. And I'm sure that's what they said. I'm sure, yeah. you know, at their DEI meeting, yeah. that's what they're talking about. <laughs> they probably have DIE meetings. Yeah. How do we get them to uh DIE, but not yet, <laughs> <laughs> but not Y-E-T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, so anyway, uh that is the same science that we're talking about you know these same scientists they're creating that they did create that they like and they're still walking around today and you're like oh yeah but no science is like it's pure like the only science that you know of is 100 motivated by money 100 it's the same science that whatever 30 years ago was like you shouldn't eat too much high cholesterol and then like after that they're like actually cholesterol is really good for you and then after that it's like actually sugar is bad for you but oh no actually it's good and oh oils are bad and no they're good no but they're bad but no these ones are good and these ones are bad and then and high fructose corn syrup is good but no it's bad and then like it's the same fucking yeah. science yeah it does not give a fuck about your life and then you learn about statistics and research oh. and you realize you can literally just manipulate what you call science yeah S statistics oh man that's a that's another whole animal right there but um but it's also interesting because you can you could use these things here's here's a good point within this you can use these things you could use these things for good or for what is best they are tools for sure however people just assume they, they have that basic assumption that like Oh, because it's science, it is infallible. Right. You know? But it's a tool. It's like yeah. a knife. Is a knife good or bad? No, it's depending on what the context of you're using it. Can it do everything? No, clearly it's a, a tool that's limited to specific context. But we don't think that science is that way. Yeah. It, it can't give you the truth about everything. I mean, by definition, it says we're only going to talk about material things. I mean, it's not even like they're saying that. That's just inherent in the way it's done. It can only make observations about things you can observe. Right. You can't, science cannot tell you anything about like, how are you alive actually? Like it can tell you about how your body is currently functioning, but it cannot tell you like, here's the moment of, of like you breathing life. It, there's, <laughs> they even have these debates with like, uh, you know, the uh, pro abortionists and the, you know, other people uh, can science prove that you exist you would you would think it can't you if are. you actually go through logically and, and look at okay i'm gonna prove it you would find that you would fail at being able to prove it that doesn't mean you don't exist i'm just saying it won't it doesn't have the ability based on its methodology to prove that explain it doesn't that. have the ability to prove that other people exist Explain that because, uh, okay, because the first thought that comes to my mind when you say that is like, um, I am in a simulation, <laughs> you know, like, that's not what I'm saying, but what, okay, yeah. how would you design a scientific experiment to prove that you exist? Why do I have to prove that I exist? I exist. Well, but that's, see, but I that's know, not, I know, I know, you I know. can't, <laughs> I know, but it's like, you can't prove it. It doesn't mean you don't exist. Who am I proving that I exist to? Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to be profound. No, 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 I'm just no, saying no, I'm, I'm just, just I'm at just a very basic level, there's I'm things being... that are true and it cannot yeah. prove them. Doesn't mean they're not true. It just means it's outside the scope of being able to prove that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to work it out for like, because it does God like exist very... or not. Can it prove God exists or not? It cannot. People think, well, no, it can prove it doesn't exist. No, you can't prove God exists. You can't prove it doesn't exist because proof is a logical process and okay. it would not apply to that context that's why i'm not saying i can prove to you god exists or doesn't exist it, to me it's like let's look at now let's go let's transcend logic because if you're trying to prove shit you're never going to be able to fucking do it hmm. that'd be like if i had a magnifying glass that only works in my house 
I take it outside and I go, now let me look at what I can see. And I'm like, there's nothing. I don't see anything. There's obviously nothing there. But you're, you know, this thing only works in here. Yeah. So it's not going to tell you what's going on over here. Yeah. 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 So you can't use logic to prove things outside of the assumptions of the logic. That's the whole point of the assumptions is they allow you to prove shit about those assumptions. And now all the religious and, people are like, yes, okay, I can continue believing in my God. I know, I know. But <laughs> but that, then again, you can't use the lack of logic to be to, to justify something either. Like just because logic can't prove something doesn't mean therefore anything goes. Because if that were the excuse me, if that were the case, well, how do you know? Islam is wrong. How do you know Hinduism is wrong? How do you know Buddhism is wrong? How do you know? Oh no. <laughs> I don't I was gonna say Judaism, but we all know that's <laughs> that's right. <laughs> isn't it isn't it weird the ADL is called the Anti-Defamation League? Yeah. But they I just agree. go around policing everybody's language and it's like they go around defaming everybody. <laughs> 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 anyway that's all another thing i don't know why i thought of that oh because the yeah um but uh like it, if you're like well see faith it's not about logic okay but then there's so many different faiths yeah so how do you know which one to choose and then if you start trying to rationalize why you choose one well now you're trying to use logic right right but then you're like well but it's you, you, if you give any reasoning, wouldn't that be logic? Yeah. So I'm not saying we can't utilize logic, but you can't purely use it. But you also can't be like, I have to denounce it. Because if you do that, then it's, I guess I'm still using logic, but it's like, how do you know which one to choose from? Okay, here's how you know. Let's look at the actual, and, and this is the point. It's not that logic is bad. It's just logic in context and understanding which rules apply where, what relationships hold. So if we go to the physical reality that we live in, what is the result of believing in X or believing in Y? What is the consequence? What is the outflow? And that can be arrived at using a form of logic, but it doesn't really even, it's not, it's a very loose, like it, it's just common sense. Yeah. It, common sense and logic are not the same, but that doesn't mean common sense has to contradict logic per se. Or be devoid of it's not, logic. It's not illogical. Yeah. Like, for example, um, I'm just trying to think if I want to give an example of that. Um, I want to get to that point of the... Uh, UTM and all that stuff, but I'm just looking at if all the other points are there. What were we talking about right before that? Oh, the God thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we were talking about the, uh, um, basically religion, but before that we were talking about, um, the point of shit <laughs> um well okay let's just go back for a moment so i want to go back to the logic point what, what i'm trying to explain is that there's a there's a there's a form of logic which is based on assumptions but if you change the assumptions you're going to get different relationships you're going to get different outflows okay and I'm not saying we can't make certain assumptions, but then look at what those assumptions create. That's my point. It's not that logic equals bad. It's just that you can't say, I can only know things through logic. Mm -hmm. Because within that statement, what you're not considering is what assumptions you've made and what logic you're applying to it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not like we need to throw out logic. Yeah. We just need to look at what is the logic we're going to use for this. Yeah. Because you can't not use logic. Like your mind is based on it. Yeah. But then 
where did the assumptions come from? And that's like going to the point about religion and so forth, right? Because if you're like, well, I believe in Christianity because well, I can't use, I'm not going to use logic because because they're saying, well, logic is out the window. So I, so my faith is valid. Right. Well, but are you being self-honest? And this is the missing part mm. within assumptions and logic is the self-honesty, right? If you're being self-honest, where did your feelings about your faith in Christianity come from? And it either came from, it either came from you were a kid and it was put into you or something happened to you in your life, maybe later in life. But then this was offered to you as a explanation, comfort, whatever that you then accepted in that moment. But it didn't come from you making that choice completely. Yeah. I I think we're ready now. We're ready now for like, um, I think the only other point that I can see here is just that uh, you would need like the reason why you accept this logic or that logic is like you said, what's the influence when you were a child, but also like there's a whole, uh, I want to bring up the point of like story. Like there's a whole story there of why you accept, I guess this whole thing. Like the all, all the, the the line of thinking, because actually, that, what, I don't know if this is what you mean by it, but like, do you mean story as in the person will tell a story about how they came to know Jesus or something like that, or do you mean a different way? Uh, I meant it in the way of like, um, because they won't use logic then to consider all these points of like, like does this actually make sense, and then just purely logically make a different decision. Like we were talking about, remember we were talking about like how people can see that the education system is crumbling and yet uh, they'll still hold on to it of like, Oh no, but this is because like there's, they've still bought into that story of like, this is what education is, you know? And it's like, okay. The reason why that happens though, is because they're still using the logic of this story and they can't, okay. Yeah. They can't move themselves outside of that. It's actually interesting if you think about it, because it's really the story that comes first. Mm -hmm. It's the story because you tell kids and what do most parents do? They don't teach their kid logic. They teach their kids stories. Yeah. And this is why also we're very specific with the kids about not uh, overemphasizing like Disney movies or cartoon or whatever these things are, because embedded in them is certain forms of logic, like um, Disney being a princess. Yeah looking for Prince Charming, you know, all these different points. Um, The big one in anime is like being that chosen one, that special boy who's going to like save the world. That's like a, every fucking anime is the same. And it's, it's always like, like the child is like weak or inadequate in some way. And then like grows to be like, I can do it. (laughs) And like, they don't have their parents. And it's like, it's kind of like Harry Potter, Disney. It's all very similar myth yes right yeah yeah, yeah. um and then so within that it forms a certain kind of logic that then that becomes the way in which you think about things right um and we don't yeah it's interesting we don't we don't consider that the stories that we tell our kids and like why we tell them like what is the story of the three little pigs what is the story of goldilocks what is the story of little red riding hood and why is that story in there? What is the logic that's that's being taught? What are the assumptions that are being taught there? Right. Yeah. Um, so going back to that point about the story of how everything came to be and how life came to be, that's a story we were told. Right. Uh, another example is this, the whole Santa Claus point. Right. Yeah. What's the logic in that? Isn't there logic of if you're good, things will be given to you? Yeah. Like you'll be rewarded for being good. Like or, that's like a slave program that's being put into you through a story when you're pre-logical. Right? Because yeah. if you had any sense of logic or really we're saying common sense. If you had any common sense you'd be like how how does this guy deliver all these presents to all these kids through their chimneys? That's the story. Yeah. But th- these kids who live in apartments, does he like just does he have to like have a key to their door? How how does he in the do window it all in one night? Isn't there like he, a can, he must go really fast, children? but also yeah, does he fly faster than the speed of light? 
Yeah. He'd have to. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, and what about if the kids are, yeah. So there's, there's, there's things that are embedded into it. And so one of the things we've always said about that is like, if you want your child to understand logic, which doesn't mean they have to only ever be logical. It's just, you're going to expect them to go to algebra class and apply a logical thinking. But from the very beginning, you've corrupted their ability to think logically. Because you could say, well, that's a different kind of logic. The logic of algebra is not the same thing as Santa Claus. But, but isn't it part of the magic of the whole thing that they actually believe that guy is flying around in reality? So let's just take algebra out of the equation. Later in life, when they're 25 years old, do you want them to think it's possible to do that thing that Santa Claus does? Right. What if they're a pilot? If What if they're an engineer? Do, don't they need to distinguish between, okay, in this context of building a bridge, I can't just make up my own idea about it based on, oh, if you're a good person, the bridge will hold. But if the bridge collapses, that was just because the person was bad. It wasn't because of my engineering. Like, do you want that kind of logic applied there? Right. So you're not teaching your kid that kind of logic from the very beginning. Again, you could be like, if you wanted to, hey, there's this pretend story about Santa Claus and we're pretending this happens. And if you really wanted to pretend, but they have to ask yourself, what's the value of that? The parents doesn't want to do that. They don't want to be like, well, no, it's a pretend story. Okay, so you, the whole logic inside of the parent about why to tell the kid the thing is you think it's really important that you make this believable and that they believe it. Right. That's a part of the logic of the parent. So it's like the story doesn't just affect the kid. It's like, infected the parent and now the parent is applying this and you and i've been questioning why it's important that like think about it, the parent believes for there to be something called magic in your life it has to be an illusion it has to be a fantasy that's the logic you've bought into as the parent right yeah and therefore yeah. it's only in the realm of pretend imagination so therefore disney has the copyrights to that do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you don't have time as a parent to sit down and make up all these stories and like, oh, the effort that goes into that. So I'll just buy the DVD from fucking D Disney. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or the Disney Plus or whatever. It's, it's, uh, I think I know why they put the plus in there. Um, oh, we know. Too. They couldn't put all the letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. So I, th I think we're ready now. We have all the points. Like, story logic science it's like everything. so far we've just been selling everybody on like what if you know like maybe you know like perhaps you know but what if i told you that even the most advanced mathematicians and philosophers and so forth the most advanced ones came to the conclusion using math like to its highest possible standard like i'm talking einstein level fucking you know what I mean? Like legitimately, yeah. legitimate, high level, even in the system, legitimate PhD, you know, not just like some crackpot guy <laughs> certified by the system, like proved that not only is mathematics and logic inherently limited, but that literally things can be can true and it will not be able to prove them. It, like you can prove with mathematics that there can be true things that the math cannot prove. Yeah. So, and I'm saying this so that we can start to crack this idea of if it hasn't been proven, it can't be real. It can't be true. It, and, and even if it is true, but it hasn't been proven, the only way for everyone to fully accept that it is true is for us to find some way to prove it. And when I say prove it, I mean in a mathematical sense. Because, like, okay, for example, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like, um, let's say I'm like, hey, I know how to fix my well house, the plumbing, right? And you're like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, come on over, spend a weekend. I'll show you what I can do. And I do it with you, right? I proved yeah. it to you, right? Yeah. But what if before you were willing to come out, you were like, prove it to me first. I'm like, well, I'll send you pictures of what I've done. You're like, no, no, like prove it to me. Like prove it like logically to me. Prove it with proof, with mathematical, logical, scientific proof. Yeah. I don't want just a case study of you did it. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what, maybe it just, maybe like, but I want you to, in some abstract way, prove it to me. 
maybe you just got lucky. You know? Right. Yeah. Maybe so, you don't know actually how to. How but to but fix somehow, your but somehow, if I was able to abstractly prove it, yeah, that would be in spite of any of the other points, that would represent proof to you, right? Well, well, because then, then, like if Harvard the- wrote a scientific study. Yeah, where they did some scientific study and was like Harvard says Cameron can do can fix the well house plumbing. Right. Then yeah. you would just look at that headline and be like, well, obviously you can do it. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> you could take that to the bank. But I mean, can they do that study? No. Like if you just think logically, is that even possible for them to do that study? The only way to prove it is if I go and just do it. Yeah. But that wouldn't represent the proof that most people are looking for because we've been indoctrinated to believe without realizing it. Actually, what we've been indoctrinated to believe is that if it has a Harvard headline on it and it was on MSNBC, that equals proof. That equals yeah. true. Yeah. So we're saying it's no, no, we want the scientific study to be done. And somehow because of the scientific method that works and that makes truth. Therefore, instead, you didn't even realize like you don't even know what the scientific method is. And also... Think about the very first person ever to invent the scientific method. Yeah. What if there was another person who came up with a slightly different method? How did they each know which one is the correct one? You could say it's based on the results, but then then the point would be if you get the results, that's what matters, not if you used that method. Right. Wouldn't it yeah. take agreement between the people of this is the method that we are going to accept? Because what if a third person came along and was like, I don't agree with that method? Yeah. They'd be like, well, you can't hang out with us because this is the method we're agreeing upon. And the person right. will, but look over here, look, I did this and look at this result they got. Well, did you use our method? No. Well, then your thing is invalid. Which is what they say all the time, isn't it? Which is what they say all the time. And it's not a actual, it's invalid. It's like you didn't play by our rules. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, it takes the agreement of everybody that this is valid and we accept that means validity. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean it's true. Yes. Have there been things that people have accepted as true that are not true? Yeah. Uh, take uh, the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> things that have happened. Many different Just things, right? Take your pick. <laughs> yeah. So, So it's interesting because even when you start studying or just looking into math and science, you realize that it's already been proven that it, that there's things that cannot be proven. There are things that are true that are outside of the ability of math to prove that are true. And what's fascinating is, you know, it's inherent in the foundations of logic itself. Yeah. Of what we call logic is fundamentally, uh, I'll, I'll, I was going to say flawed. It doesn't mean it can't give you some results. I don't think it's a flaw, actually. I think it's a feature. I don't think it's a bug. I think it's a feature. Okay, actually, that's cool that you said that. Why do you say it's a feature? Because it it's letting you know that, hey, this doesn't work for all things. Okay, like, let's look at that for a moment, okay? Yeah. Why is that a good thing? Because then you don't rely on it. Then you, you Then you can go, oh, okay, cool. So there are other things outside of this. You don't get trapped by just like the- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is what I'm trying to get at. There aren't other things outside of it. Mm. Because anything you think of as a thing that can be used to get the truth of something uh-huh. is actually a logic that you're trying to use. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's, in other words, true. it's a fail-proof system that you believe gives you the proof in an abstract way to verify this is true. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Outside of you. Like, no, it's been, it's proven ah, here. Sometime. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if the very, if that very concept itself has inherently in it, I'm not just talking about math logic. I'm talking about all, all logic. forms of systematic proof, yeah. logic, proof, whatever you want to call it. Fundamentally, the nature of that way of, of doing things has within it a built-in flaw. I agree. It's a feature actually, but I'm just saying it's a flaw that makes it so it cannot prove everything. So there is no, another way of looking at this is there's no, well, we'll go into the, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like you you want to build up to it and you want to just spill the beans, but, but you don't want to spill <laughs> the beans too early. You're like, 
you're like working it and you're like you, you want to build up to it and, and she's not ready yet and you're like ah but, I, but I'm, I'm really close i, I really want to do yeah, yeah yeah are you talking about doing ai with a cow yeah exactly you have to wait till they're in heat at a certain point because they have to have the the corpus callosum or whatever forming or i forget exactly what it's called but really the corpus callosum no, it's not Corpus Close. <laughs> it's Corpus <laughs> Luteum or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely not Corpus Close. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Like <laughs> I sound like I, I feel like we're doing like Harry Potter spells over here. Corpus Colosum. <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. Yes. Um, um, okay, so hold on. Where were we? We're building up to it. But we were at the logic point. Uh, this is a really important point. Is it possible, and, and I'm not trying to spill the beans yet, but it's going to sound like I'm spilling the beans, but I'm not, okay? Because okay. you know the beans. Okay. Is it possible to build a machine that tells you every single thing you should or shouldn't do, whether it's right or wrong, true or false, and will basically be like a computer that you can just put all of your decision-making into that will always give you the right answer? Is that even theoretically possible, fundamentally, in reality? I have, I have another question that's going to sound like I'm spilling the beans and maybe I, okay. I don't know. All right. No, don't spill them, but you can kind of, you can tip them. Is it possible, is it possible that you could have an authority outside of yourself that could tell you everything as far as right and wrong and you know good or bad all of that um that you could 100 percent rely on How's because you see and here's the thing with that that's so easy to disprove hmm. because at the end of the day doesn't it take you and your common sense your decision your will your self your permission, your acceptance, your authority to determine and decide and accept that that is the authority that is going to be the authority. Mm, yes, like, yeah, yeah. is it logically possible for the authority to exist without you in some way accepting that it's the authority at some level? Oh, 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 oh. check this out. Check this out. Because you also have like God and the devil, right? And, and so there's the question of how do you know like the decision that you're making that the, the God you're following is God and not the devil. It, it's, you know, it's written in like the Bible, at least that it, he's the ultimate deceiver and can make himself look like God essentially. But I know God is speaking to me. And what I'm saying is if something's speaking to you, go ahead. Here's, here's the question is how are you making the decision of this is God or this Here, is check this out. Check this out. Yeah. If you have anything feeling, if something's talking to you, giving you information, whatever, yeah, that is the devil. Oh, okay. okay the okay. only way you know it's God is if he doesn't give you any information. He doesn't give you any indication. He doesn't give you anything you can grasp onto. Not even like a special little boy feeling? No, but think about it. Think about what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. The only way for God to speak to you and for you to know it's God is if he doesn't speak to you. How, 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 how are you coming to that? Because Satan wants to deceive you. Ah. So if you were God. <laughs> Just don't say anything. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying look at it really, actually. Yeah. Satan's always going to try to deceive you. Yeah. God's not going to talk to you. Hmm. God. So the, the actual way, see, the thing is, I'm not playing in the paradigm of God existing. I'm just saying the only way for God to exist uh -huh. is if we act as if we were God mm -hmm. making the decision that God would make, knowing mm -hmm. it's the best decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this okay, because okay. someone told me to do it, you are being deceived by, by Satan. Okay. Okay. I was in the You are doing paradigm. it for something outside of yourself. God is not going to tell you the answer. You have yeah. free will. He wants you to choose freely. You can't be like, God put this in my heart. Satan put it in your heart there you go. by yeah. definition. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here with you now. I'm here with you. Now. So what I'm saying is there cannot be 
a thing that we can create or that exists outside of us already. Maybe we didn't create it, but it pre-existed. Like God, yeah. the idea of God yeah. that can tell us right and wrong. Yeah. Because even if it existed, we would still have to be choosing whether we think that is the thing that is God or the devil, whether it is the right or the wrong. Even yeah. if that thing exists, we still have to make our use our discernment to know. Yeah. And the question is, if you had never heard of God, if you had never been exposed to God, if you lived in a context before God had ever communicated to human beings, would you be able to make decisions without God? Yeah. But no, because everybody who believes in God would say, no, you need God to give you that. Mm. But then you run to the problem of you've already pre-accepted that you have the potential to be deceived now. Because if God has to give it to you, how yeah. do you know it's God giving it to you and not Satan? Because right. you can't pre-know whether it's God. Because yeah. you would have to be able to make that determination in the absence of God. You yeah. would have to have built into you the ability to discern God before God ever gave you any indication, any hint, any ability whatsoever. If you didn't already know how to make that determination, then when God does give you information, you have to make the assumption that this is God speaking to you and not Satan. Right. And at some point, you have to make that decision. It can't be some Which equals, thing. it's not yeah. God giving it to you in the first place. It's who you are making that determination. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the only way for God to exist, act well, actually, I'll get to that. I don't want so to that was really beats. good. That was really good. But that's I, the I, fucking truth, man. Yeah, no, that, that was that was well said. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. So, are we ready, are we ready to spill those again? beans? Oh, yeah, those okay. beans are they're cooking, they're bubbling. You know, when you're on the stove and you're like, if I leave them to cook more, they're just gonna burn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to burn the beans. Oh man, I was making something the other day, and uh, it was during one of our <laughs> one of our meetings, and it was burning on the stove. It was just at the point where it just started to burn um anyway maybe a little bit of burnt is okay well i, I, I was know. able to I've never really it. had i was able beans. to scrape all the stuff like above the burn and so it was perfect it was cheese perfect. you can toast and it's technically burning it i suppose right but you don't yeah, want to yeah. toast be you don't want to burn beans no no you don't want to burn beans it gets stuck to the bottom um okay so uh the utm right all all this i was just checking we have another meeting at 12 so we have to we have to yeah, spill we, those beans yeah, we have to. Sorry, we have, we've got to go now. Uh, we got to start spilling some, these beans on the next beans. episode. <laughs> okay. All right, gotta go. All right. So, if you can imagine, there is what we've been calling the UTM, a universal truth machine. It can tell you all the truths in the universe. Every truth it can, it can tell you. That's the purpose of this machine. And yeah, it, it, that that is the machine. And you build this thing perfectly, right? And then, hold on, let's just set it up a little bit further. Because okay, you, okay. you did a good job, and just trying to make sure it's clear to everybody. Like, this is not just some random hypothetical thing. Like everything we've been talking about. Can you have a system that tells you the truth? Can you have the system that that lets you know if something is right or wrong? Can there be a god that is like this is true, this is false? Like, without without doubt, this is what it is. So so obviously. God is a whole separate point, but let's just say we're humans. We believe in science. We believe in technology and science can tell you if things are true. And if it doesn't tell you it's true, it's not true, right? Like if I have some method of doing something and I can't scientifically prove it to you through the science that exists, you shouldn't believe it. You shouldn't accept it. It's pseudoscience. It's false. It's superstition. It's bullshit. Okay. That doesn't mean because it's not provable by science equals it's true. Like I could right. obviously come up with something that is clearly not true, but yeah. not be able to, but that I'd probably be able to disprove, but not necessarily, okay. not necessarily. I might not be able to disprove it. Just like God. I can't be like, I'm an atheist and I've disproven God. No, you haven't. You can't. Right. Yeah. You can't. And I can't say I'm a Christian and I've proven God. All the people who have tried to prove God scientifically that were Christians, whatever, they made proofs, but there was always something that's a flaw in there. You can yeah, look, of course. there's never, an, it's an actual legitimate proof. That's, that's okay. So there's I'm just saying like, there. this applies to everything. Can you yeah. make a system? Could you make a vast intelligent computer that's so fucking advanced that 
you it can give you the truth always will give you the truth about anything that's be that's being asked about and, and okay. so this is the uh this is the simplified version of this actual mathematical principle of uh because <laughs> this has been worked out and proven but the simplified version for for everyone is let's say you have constructed a universal truth machine that can tell you every single truth in the universe. And then you back it into a corner. You back it into a corner. Or by, can you? Well, can you back it into a corner? That's a, that's a great question. So you can, write, we, can we prove that if that thing exists, hypothetically, that it actually can't exist? Right. You know, if you've ever taken a math course, there's something called proof by contradiction. You make an assumption that this is true, or this is mm -hmm. a possibility, or this is a thing that can be done. And then you work out through the logic of using just mathematics, you work out, oh, it's actually a contradiction here. So this can't exist. Yes. It's not possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to try to find out. Can we, can we prove that it does or does not exist by contradiction? And so we write out a truth that is the universal truth machine cannot say G is true. Statement G. Statement G. So is hold true. on, let me back up. You said we write out a truth. We just write out a statement. We don't know it's, if this is true oh, or not because the okay. thing's going to tell yes. us, right? Yes, yes. So we write out a statement yeah. that says the universal truth machine will not say that statement G is true. Yes. Okay. Will not, cannot, however you want to phrase it. I, I like I like that Cam is Cam is being very like he's like a lawyer here, you know, like being like logical for some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, 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 no. We'd rather use this exact word. Very good, very good. Okay, so the universal truth machine will not say G is true. We'll never say. We'll never say G is true. And then G is representing a a statement. Yes, okay. G is a, so a variable. People are not used to prop pro propositional logic, so they don't. You guys remember that from math? So you remember <laughs> if P then Q and truth yeah. tables and you know X, you know X. Maybe I should have said X. I don't know. No but G, G, G for God. <laughs> <laughs> and then G is what was G again? Oh, that this statement is true. No, no, th that statement that we just said. Oh, that's it. The, the UTM, the universal truth machine, will never say that statement G is true. That is statement G. Okay, there you that go. That is the statement. So G is that statement itself. So it refers to itself. Yes. Right? So the statement G is the universal truth machine That's will never right. say that statement G is true. So yes. that is, it's, it's that statement G, and it refers to itself in its own statement. That's right. That's okay. what makes it so, so beautiful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you present that to the universal truth machine. So, so just real quick. So- a mathematician who's super smart, got all the credentials if you want that part, right? And no one's ever contradicted this. No one, I don't even think there's anyone who says it's of invalid proof. Like there's no one who's like, oh, this guy was full of shit. Like everyone accepts it, okay? Um, not that it matters, but just for you who want the authority and the, you know, all the experts yeah. agree sort of bullshit, right? Yeah. Um, he was able to take mathematics and show that mathematically using symbols and math, pure math, no, no, no funny business, just act the actual math itself, using the rules of the math, you can create a statement like that mathematically that refers to itself. He was able to figure out how math can refer to itself in a statement and so forth, right? And he was able to create a statement where we're giving you like the kind of language equivalent version, but he did it with like pure mathematics. Okay, this is just like the language equivalent of this. Okay, because language is a, is a is a mathematical system. It's a logic. It has words and relations. It's just another form of a logical system. Yeah. Math is just one type of logical system, but it, they're inherently all logical systems. So this inherent thing is in them. If it has one thing where it can refer to itself, so if you have a system that can refer to itself, if it can be constructed in a way where it can refer to itself, it can have self. Uh, uh, reference, then this property will be inherent in that system. And what you notice is language can refer to itself. Language can talk about language. Yeah. You know, you can talk about the rules of grammar and statement. You can use language to talk about the system of language. So it has its own. Can you talk about yourself? Yes. So even you, if you're like, I'm a purely logical person, 
but you can refer to yourself. You can think about yourself. You can refer to yourself. That means you fall under the rules of this system that we're about, of, that we're talking about, because you have the ability of self-reference and you're using logic. Okay. Yeah. So all atheists that are totally rational, logical fall under this as well. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Um, so the statement is that the universal truth machine will never say that G is true. And G maybe is... maybe you write to write this down for yourself, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you're watching this, pause it, or if you're in real time, just write it down, right? So the universal truth machine will never say that statement G is true. And then secondly, you can write in like you know put like parentheses around that and be like G, G is... and then point at that like this is G. That statement yeah. is G. So the G that's being referred to in the statement is that statement, okay? Yeah. So that's the that's where the self reference comes in. Yes. And then you give that to the universal truth machine. Okay. So let's just see what people think, right? Give them a moment. What would it say? <laughs> what would it say? Would it say true or would it say false? Because that's the purpose of this machine, right? It can't say, I don't know. That's not a right. valid answer because the whole point of this machine is that if it's hypothetically possible, it, it will tell us if something is true. Or yeah. if something is false, yeah. because that was the purpose of creating it. We are trying to create this artificial intelligence, neural network, God machine, ultimate vast computer that will give us the answer to everything. So we can never have to worry about anything ever again. We will know when things are true or false. Like we can prove it mathematically and we don't have to rely on anything outside of proof or logic or math or this computer. We can just know it. So if the universal truth machine says this statement is true no start with okay okay start with false yeah okay i was gonna start with false anyway. if the universal truth machine says this statement is false so let's see what that what would that imply break that down yeah that would, would imply that, that um that means that hang on <laughs> no, i gotta back up okay. it's tricky right. it's, it's one thing we're trying yeah, to explain yeah, yeah. it yeah okay so if the universal truth machine says statement G or that this statement, you, you G gave the statement it, and yeah. it prints out false. What false. does that imply? If it says false, then it says that um, we'll never say that this is true, that G is true. Then that means that the statement is actually true. And the truth machine just told you it was false. And um, so, it means that the statement was false because it said false. It said false. The universal truth machine said it was false. However, that means it makes the statement true because you said the universal truth machine will never say G is true. Because it's saying this is a false statement. This is my decision. It is false. I'm always saying this is false. Exactly. And so then. But that means that the state. Okay, just to be clear, everybody. Like, there's a paradox. The statement was predicting that would happen. Yes. It was saying you're never going to say this is true. And you're like, that is a false statement. And actually, but, but hold on, but 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 I said you were gonna say that. Yeah, which it's like if I to break it down, if I said you're gonna say this is false. Okay. No, I'm not false. Yeah. Okay. So was I was I telling the truth? Y yet or wait? Yes, because I said it was false. But I'm saying you were false, which means that I would say it's true. Right. Because I, because the statement was, you'll never say it's true, which means you're going to, this is the same thing as saying you're going to say it's false. Yeah. So, but if I say false, that means the statement that I made was correct yeah. because you ver you validated what I said, but in validating it by saying it, it was false. You've also said that it was false even though by saying it's false you made it true so you lied i know it's confusing it's not confusing to me but i know it can seem confusing I know, I know. it might it's take people time to wrap listening. your mind around it i'm just trying to help you do the thinking you yeah. can also at any point pause it and think about it for yourself because yes. it's it's hard when someone explains it to you like you have to really just get it yeah and i mean you have to think about it like it, it but we're just we're talking so we're gonna have to talk right okay but my point is by yeah. saying false, you said it's false that you will say this is never true. Yeah. 
but that made it a true statement because you just you just validated it right so you should have said well it's true then but what happens if you say it's true then that means that you just made it a into a false statement right because by saying it's true you're saying it's true that i will never say it's true but you just said it was true yeah. so the only way for it to be true is if you say it's true but that makes it false because by saying it's true you say it's true that i will never say it's true yeah okay so actually what i meant to say is it's a false statement okay so it's false you're always going to say it's it's not true right ah. <laughs> so yeah. no matter what happens it can't say now think about this the only thing it can do is not say anything it yeah. can't say it's true because if it says it's true it invalidates it because the statement was that it would never say it's true so how can you say it's true that you'll never say it's true you can't yeah how can you say it's false by by saying it's false you're saying that you would say it's true. So no matter what you say, you either, you, you basically say the, you, you, you're lying. You're saying yeah. the opposite. You're yeah. making it, you're invalidating or validating it and contradicting yourself, no matter what you say. But the only way, here's the fascinating thing. And I, I want people to think about it for a second. Okay. The only way for the statement to be true without being contradicted is what? The only way for the statement to be true without being contradicted is if the UTM is not a universal truth machine? Yes and no. But but in just in the limited context of, of giving it the statement. Uh -huh. The only way for the statement to be true and not be contradicted is if the UTM doesn't give you an answer. Well, okay, yeah. No, but, 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 but it's specific. If it doesn't give you an answer, it's not, it's, it's never saying it's true. Mm -hmm. mm. You see that? Yeah. If it never says it's true. Then you are correct. Now you might say, well, it could say it's false. No, but if you saw, if you, if it says it's false, it's actually self-contradicting. No, that makes sense. So I'm saying the only way for it to be true and there not to be a contradiction because the machine, if it contradicts itself, it's not a, an actual universal truth. It, you could never trust this thing. Yeah. Because you're like, well, what fuck? What other statements is it actually contradicting itself? So I can't just trust it. I can't just be like, whatever it says, it's true. Yeah. But now look, the only way for it to be true and not be in the machine not contradict, contradict itself is if it doesn't say anything. Which means here is a because think about it. If it doesn't say anything, then is it true that the machine will never say it's true? Yes. Yeah. Because it's never going to say anything. That's yeah. and that's the only way. Because if it says anything whether true or false, it's contradicting. Yeah. So the only way for the statement to be true and to remain as a true statement, according to the machine's logic, is if the machine says nothing. In other words, as long as the machine can't tell you the truth about this, because that's the statement, this statement can remain true. It could yeah. be a truth. Yeah. And so what this mathematician figured out is no matter how complex or simple, no matter how valid and sound a logical system you make a computer system is just a logical system i know oh it's time no matter what you cannot you can you there can be things that are true that that system cannot tell you is true yeah and think about it just to find just to wrap it up what are the elite trying to create right fucking now uh ai ai that's what what's the ultimate idea agi ultimate it's it, it's, uh, it's this fucking computer system that will be able to help us know everything yeah and there's gonna be a singularity going beyond human intelligence yeah and it'll just it'll get so advanced we'll just know everything and we'll just yeah. we'll, it'll just give us all the blessings yeah and to the point where they think you can live forever by uploading your consciousness to a computer system, which we're showing you is inherently limited. Mm. You're trying to put yourself, diminish yourself into a logical system that inherently can't say the truth about everything. And you think that's how you're going to live forever. Yeah. Can't work. So are you going to be able to prove everything? Now, where does the actual point of proof come in? Real proof is you use yourself as your being, as who you are to determine 
what you accept and what you allow. And then look at the consequence of that in self-honesty. Yeah. That's the best you're ever going to get for a universal truth machine. It's you. Boom. That's the beat. Right. Well, we got to go. I can't, I can't give you my icing on top of the icing. You'll just have to, you'll just have to be on the next call. You, you should, you should be there. Probably just going to talk about it again. <laughs> yeah. <All> right. <laughs> we got to go. We got, we got a parenting call. So we'll see you guys right, later. Cool. Bye. See you next time.